Okay. Okay. So now on the chat, is there anyone on the chat? Hello. Can you guys see me? Um, is this posting? Yes, we're good. You can see me on the chat. Okay, excellent. All right. So let's go ahead and close that door back there. Unless, I guess maybe some people might trail in, but um, this is Brandon Sanderson live writing session number two. Um, we are going to be working on the story that I worked on earlier uh, in the year. Uh, if you weren't involved in that or don't know about it, what we do is I uh, write a story or work on one we've already started writing on air, live, and taking suggestions from the chat room and from the room here at JordanCon. Everyone say hi. hi. We are at JordanCon. Uh, the idea is to be doing this for charity. Waygate Foundation is a, an actual 501c3 charitable organization um, with all the correct paperwork. And they do charitable work uh, in the name of science fiction and fantasy um, fandom. And uh, do we know what this charity, what we're benefiting tonight? World Builders. World Builders. Pat Rothfuss's um, World Builders Foundation. And Pat may make an appearance himself on this, uh, this feed. So we are writing a story. The idea is to encourage you to donate to World Builders while we're doing this. And then eventually we will finish up this story. Oh, no, now I just got intimidating. Harriet's here. Um, <laughs> um, and we will, um, yeah. You see the author's eyes go wide when his editor walks in the room. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we will work on this story live, and we will then eventually, hopefully, sell this story, meaning just like on, um, on uh, as an ebook for charity. All the proceeds will go to charity. And this is the story that we um, brainstormed last time. You guys all gave me the ideas. And we brainstormed it. And uh, you wanted to write a science fiction story. Um, and it came out as a world where people's memories are stored in their hair. <laughs> um, and uh, this was a concept we decided to run with. And what we're going to do today, just to start off now, I will warn you, this kind of is part Q&A, um, part writing session. We are going to take what I did before, and I'm going to show you how I do a revision. This is pro mostly going to be a polishing um, pass. We're going to look at the sentences. We're going to try and make this more tight. Uh, we're going to try and make it more active and a little more um, uh, concrete. We're going to try to add better, um, just better language all around. Um, yes, yeah, so they should take off the delay. There are fewer of you online this time. Let's try it. We'll try it without the delay online, guys, um, this time. And we'll see how it goes um, without the delay. So. No longer in slow mode. So we'll see how this goes. Now, the um, thing to say is last time, as I warned you many times, I have no idea how this will go. Um, I have no idea <laughs> if this story is going to be any good. Uh, I'm not <laughs> promising you that it will be any good. Uh, all I'm promising you is that I'm going to show you the process that I use, and we're going to hope that uh, the story turns out to at least be a fun process to work on. Um, so. This is our story. And we have, what, 2,000 words of this? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start working through it. And I'll try to explain what I'm doing as I do it. Um, so Lucius shoved his way into the restroom and slammed the door, clutching a fistful of gray and black hair clippings. Um, I do like that, uh, that intro. It's a nice evocative sentence. Um, it, it shows motion. It shows somebody having a passion for something. I don't, know, don't feel there's anything necessarily wrong with that. Um, so with his other hand, he flipped on the bathroom fan, which rattled loudly. He had maybe two minutes. So I'm looking at this sentence right here. Um, and I'm trying to decide, do I really need that sentence? Um, do I need the he had maybe? Can I be like, could I just say? Now, it needs to be uncertain, because um, from what we find out later on, um, let's look at this loudly. Any suggestions on how to get rid of that adverb? I don't know that we need that one. It, it might just, um, 
it might just be better without that. Let's see. I just say this. Let's see. Okay, I just I have to read the chat occasionally. Um, he flipped on the bathroom fan, which rattled loudly. We'll leave that for now. Barely enough time. He dumped the sweaty locks of hair, and on his own, into a small dish and pulled out his blowtorch. Okay, that's kind of an awkward sentence. Um, I'm, I've got the sweaty there, the, um, the not his own, and it's like the sweaty locks of hair, is it like what's the sweat? Um, I don't know that we need, um, I don't know that we need the not his own. Honestly, it looks like to me we can tighten that by, re by removing that. Um, I don't think that that's information we need currently. His locks of hair into a small dish and pull out his blowtorch. The broken ceiling fan would mask the sound. It's powering off of Okay, so we're doing a parallelism. Let's try broken ceiling fan would max this both. The sound. And ooh, this keyboard is a very odd keyboard. <laughs> um, so I feel that we can trim this down. And I want you guys uh, to be reading along, because I'm going to be asking you questions about what we should do with this story afterwards. So this, uh, this part, pay, pay attention to the story. Um, he dumped the sweaty locks of hair in a small dish and pulled out his blowtorch. Broken ceiling fan would max both the sound and scent of what came next. Fixing his goggles, making certain his barber's apron was tied tightly, he lit the porch and knelt down in the cramped room. All right, so right here what you've got is um, I'm trying to get across some more information and, and do some of our, um, our setting, um, but I'm breaking up the action in order to make sure he's got his barber's apron on, tied on tightly. Um, I don't know that we, like, it's nice information to have, um, I don't know that he would actually tighten his barber's apron right there, right? Like, is that the right sentence to be, there, the right phrase to be including? Well, let's just read through this. I may get rid of that eventually. Let's just go ahead and keep reading. reading. Then he started to burn the hair. All right. What's happening here is actually working really well. Um, the problem is, I think I've got a problem right here. Um, we have it, him smelling it, and then it releasing tendrils of smoke. Um, I think my sequencing is a little bit off here. And um, for one, one of the things you want to do with a book, with a story, is you often want the character's attention to direct what the reader's attention is toward and those to work in parallel um, with one another. And so the idea is that right here, he starts the torch, smoke comes up, and then he smells the smoke is the sequence that's going to go from him. And with us reversing some of that sequence, it actually kind of throws us a little bit for a loop. It makes us feel like we're going backward a bit in time um, with this one. And with writing, really, what we're looking to do is to get rid of anything that's going to slow the reader down, kick the reader out, remind them it's a story. Um, clarity is king. And this is really what we're looking to do. Um, is make it clear. So I want to try to make these paragraphs a little tighter. Um, and I'm going to cut the barber's apron, because I don't think it's important information now. And I'm just going to go, I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going um, I'm to create a new file for right now that I'm just going to use my, as a clipboard. Um, and we'll just uh, stick that in there, because I do want to have that, that phrase in there. Fixing the goggles, he lit the torch. Yeah, torch and knelt down in the current. Knelt, uh, knelt in the cramped room. He lit his torch.
knelt in the cramped room and turn So, I don't like how many um, dependent clauses I've got in this sentence. It's, it's reading really awkwardly right now. I'm going to put the goggles here. Yeah. You can't see my keyboard. Um, but this is one of these nice ergonomic like <laughs> keyboards like this. And it's really bizarre for someone like myself who's used to cramped laptop keyboards. Um, there's just too much room. These keys are way so, are so big, so spacious. You just got too nice a keyboard. Um, I'll downgrade it for next time. Yes. Okay, well, we, got some, we moved some of the dependent clauses around. He lit the torch, knelt in the room, and turned the flame upon the hairs. They released tendrils of smoke, which coiled and writhed toward the ceiling. Unlike human hair, let's see. Is citrusy a word, Harriet? <laughs> uh, <laughs> there you go. They released ten. Oh, we've got a double release though. They released and releasing. Hmm. Coiled ride toward the ceiling. Bearing. <laughs> Bear im Bearing the distinctly citrus like scent of Anyone remember what these aliens are called? Yeah, we put it at the bottom, didn't we? We put it, uh, oh, the document map is not visible. Uh, how do I turn on the document map without having it <laughs> view? Can you spell that for me? OK. What's that? That's our if you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is that what <laughs> Aroma is such a good word. Oh, I like aroma. Um, good uh, 20 points to rag staying 94. <laughs> uh, let's see, OK. So what we're I'm trying to do is make this more in scene, more poignant to the scene that's being written, and less abstract. Um, <clears throat> Um, so let's see. It's coiled and ride toward the ceiling. I think that just saying it's a distinctly citrus like aroma of um, burning. I think this will work. I don't think we need to say it's different from the way human hair smells because it is a distinct um, scent unto itself. And so by not saying, I mean, it's obvious. Human hair does not smell like citrus when it's burned. Um, so um, he let the corpse knelt in the cramped room and turned the flame upon the hairs. Very good. That, that's, yes. 
Um, yeah, I think you're right. I think it is distinct. Yeah, you're right. Citrus like aroma. All right, so right now I'm just kind of worried about the bearing burning repetition, the, f the feel of it. Oh. Bearing carrying. I really like this releasing. I think this is the one I need to change. I think we can just do, yes, tendrils of smoke coiled and ride toward the ceiling. I think that that's what we want to do. It just trims a few words we don't need. It makes the, it a little more active, letting the tendrils do things. Um, so yeah, uh, that sentence really pops for me now. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set off the shadow that's making into its own paragraph. Burning. We're going to give it a oh, stupid Microsoft Word. All right. All right. Just. General, where's autocorrect? Autocorrect options, autoform as you type. Uh, boom, take that off. Stop doing that Microsoft Word. Um, one of the things that's kind of fun is you can see I actually use my um, left index finger to hit Y. Unlike a lot of people, if you look at your keyboard. And this is a split keyboard like this. And so I keep hitting the empty, the, the empty space between them to hit Y. Because you're supposed to use your right index finger to, type, to hit Y. And so, yeah. I do not type correctly. I, this, uh, yeah. is, where's the ship captain guy? I don't know. Did I cut the mention of goggles? No, I left the mention of goggles. I cut the apron. Um, Try LibreOffice or Google Docs, Brandon. Um, I don't want to do Google Docs because I've had trouble with Google Docs offline before. Um, and so um, I do like Microsoft Word. It's just you have to turn off a bunch of their features that they, they yeah, they played out in the smoke. Shadows. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make these more a focus of the scene. Um, they played out in the smoke. Shadows. which swirled and charms were in the shapes of figures. <laughs> Lenses, okay. All right, so uh, this sentence, That's another one I hit with the wrong finger. Forming the shapes of figures is only because it's only through, I think, his lenses. He breathed in the smoke, and with it came impressive sensations. OK, so this revision of this paragraph, what we, what we did right here is I tried to make the shadows and swirling more active. Um, the lenses are not as important. I moved them down in the paragraph. Rather than interrupting an important thought, I put them as an addendum to an important thought, which allows us to keep the focus right here. Um, and I just feel that this, this is going to, you know, it, we got our single line little pop uh, paragraph there to say this is the focus of this scene. Images are playing out in the sense. So he remembered. I think I don't need that line. I think what I'm going to be saying here is going to indicate there's lots. I can just say, 
other days, spent as a clerk. I can just say days. Days spent as a clerk. And All right, we've got a parallelism problem here. Um, remember, dinner the night before, cups of wine, music, like the sound of fingers on crystal. Um, Yeah, you're right. Good catch. That would go before filing. Meals. I, I think we've already done a meal. We don't need that. Lenses. Let's look back at what I'm just reading what people say. Let's see. This will only through his lenses. Wow, how did I change formatting? That's okay. Only in his lenses. I think I like through better. Um, good night to Jenna. Minister of Modern Import. You're right, he is. Um, this, so he is not just a clerk. You're right. We need him to be important. So they spent. Yeah, I don't think he's typing, sorting, and filing, right? We decided he was more important than that. Uh, so spent. Reading reports, evening spent. I'm going to put this down here. Because none of the other scenes he sees get more than one sentence, I think I was overemphasizing that scene. Um, So I think this, this works stronger. Uh, the person, yeah, reading ports, you're right. Lack of Oscar is what gives me that. Yeah, can I do something more specific than this? So let's ask the room at large. Stress over his job, vague sentence, right? Um, what specific thing can a um, um, 
clerk of moderate import, a, a minister of moderate import in the government, what's his stress over? What can we use? Ah, uh, I like that. That's incompetent in other things. Tension. Frustration. Yes. Well, here. Uh, oh, that B, yeah. Uh. Thank you for spelling incompetent right for me. How about that? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to say mistakes. All right, nice work, nice addition to our little story here. So how's this paragraph looking to everybody? Um, stagnation, that's actually a really good suggestion too, Jilly Beans. Um, I, I, we're going to go with this one. It's the first one I saw, but that is, that is a great thing. So, so paragraph's looking good. Um, we don't need that. I don't think we actually even need that. What's that? Oh, oh, she forgives you. Oh. <laughs> we'll take another of your suggestions later, Jilly Bean. Um, so, experience is fast. There's a patch of memories by now. There's more other than self. What do you guys think of this? What do you guys think of stressing um, those two words? Yes, no, maybe? Vote from the audience. Do you like those stressed or unstressed? Stressed, raise your hands. Unstressed, raise your hands. Okay, most don't care. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Steve got outvoted. Um, all right, so we're going to end um, right there with that little sequence. I like how this kind of runs. So what we've got going on very nicely here is what I try to create. Um, <laughs> I, I really try to create, you've got a rising tension in even a scene, right? When you're trying to write a, a great story, you're, you're trying to build these things upon one each other. And the building blocks are really your sentences and paragraphs. Um, but you want each little scene, even within a, uh, a smaller scene, to have a conflict that then comes to a resolution. And our resolution is he's trying to do something with his hair, and it is a failure. But it does come to resolution, and it actually has a nice sort of rising action, and then comes to a climax, and then we get to an epilogue, which, which sags us into the next scene. Um, and so this little sequence in, unto itself is a little novel. There's not very much to it, but it has beginning, middle, end, epilogue. Um, it even has prologue with setup, the actual action of what he's doing, um, what we call a try-fail cycle, which ends in a fail and then an epilogue. And this is how you're, you're building your books, is you're starting with these pieces, and you're trying to expand them outward um, into larger pieces, which have their own beginnings, middle, and ends. So each chapter does. And then you know each sequence with a character through a narrative structure of several chapters. And then beyond that, each book is, is seeking to do this, and then each series. Um, and so yes, by the way, those um, who are asking, um, underline denotes italics in a manuscript format. You do not need to do this anymore. Um, in the old days, it was really important because a typesetter had to go through your book, your manuscript, page by page in print form, and then they had to go typeset that into their machines. And an underline is way easier to see on a page than an italic, and it would, it would be very easy for them, for instance, um, to miss that little italicized A. You would, of course, italicize this one, um, but there's times where you'll italicize something like that. And so seeing it was really hard, whereas they could scan very easily and see the underlines. So you just, people got in the habit of doing this. Now, of course, nowadays, they take the digital file and just plug it in to their, with their digital file. Um, but a lot of us who um, learned to, to do this in the days before they did that, even after computers came along, typesetters were kind of slow to move. And it's only like the last 10 years that they've really decided, OK, I suppose we can take the author's file 
work from, I suppose, this inferior file from the, from the author. Um, but it just, it's something I, I grew into the habit of, which is why I also type in courier, you can see here, um, because tur courier is a, a, a font where each character takes up the same amount of space, which makes it very easy for them to say, you know, if I want um, a dash, I can do that. Whereas, anyway, it's just all these notation things. So um, let's stop for a few minutes and um, let's mention thank you again to Waygate for setting this all up for us. They did all the technical sort of things. Waygate is wonderful. Um, Waygate came about um, because at one of the very early conventions, where was it? Was it the first Jordan Con? Do you even remember? I was being driven somewhere. It was earlier than that. Tarvalon and 10th Annie. I'm being driven along by, um, by some wonderful people, and they're talking about all the charitable work they want to do in, with the Wheel of Time um, and with science fiction fantasy fandom. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. Wheel of Time fans do so many awesome things. You also terrify me. And they're like, what? And I said, because you just kind of go gung-ho into this, all of this stuff, with no structure, with no worry about you know, maybe the tax implications and the, gov and, and the regulations and things. Um, you, know, you raise all of this money, and they um, said, wow, we should actually have an organization for this. Um, and seized upon that. It's one of the times where I've said something just random that turned into something enormous, where they went and went through all of this work, set up a board of directors. Um, they went and got charitable donation status, or whatever that called. They, they became an actual organization. They set up bylaws and rules, and, um, and we, we have board meetings and all of these things, um, they're awesome. So that we can have this, this thing for charitable donations in the science fiction fantasy community. And anyone who wants to be involved in the science fiction fantasy community with some sort of charity can come to Waygate and see if they can um, if be part of it. Um, they, will, they will handle the money. They have a board of directors. They have you know, oversight committees to make sure that uh, no, no, no bad things are happening to the money and things like that. And so you can do this at your convention or something like this and not have to be afraid of fall, going afoul of all of this. So that is why they are so awesome. And right now we are supporting world builders. Now, if we want um, Pat Rothfuss to come in and be Pat, which you know he's very good at doing. He's very good at being Pat. Um, yeah, it's very natural. You, you know he can do it. I, I'm just he must have a lot of practice. If we want him to come here, be Pat on camera, which he is willing to do. Um, we have set a goal, um, and that is to raise a thousand dollars tonight. Now we do have an interim that um, before we get to Pat, you will get Isaac and um, Ben McSweeney. Isaac Stewart and Ben McSweeney, right? Did Peter, Peter came last time, right? Yeah. yeah. So Isaac Stewart and Ben McSweeney, who did the artwork for um, the Stormlight Archive. Uh, they did uh, almost all of the interior artwork, uh, save for a couple of pieces done by the wonderful Dan Dos Santos. Um, and they are going to come when we hit $500 and answer some questions for you and be themselves as kind of a, an appetizer for um, earning Pat Rothfuss. So we are going to ask you all to donate. They're going to post a link right here. Um, this money goes to World Builders, which is usually used uh, to support Heifer International, which buys livestock and uh, gives training to people in, um, in areas that need help uh, around the world, learning to support themselves. It will provide for them animals they can use to, to create a living for themselves and things like this. It's a wonderful charity. So. Um, I would love for you guys to donate and support them. And we're going to transition into a short Q&A here with me right now, and then we'll get back to doing this. Um, I imagine tonight the bulk of our time will be spent doing this revision, then building an outline for what we want our entire story to be. And I don't know if we'll write any new prose. We may write a little bit. But I want to have a really nice outline coming out of this, because as a writer, this is the way I work. Often I'll do an experimental. Um, scene like this, and then that's when I sit down and I say, what's my story about? What, what, is, my, what is my conflict? What is my climax? What, and I build all of that out in an outline. And then next time when we sit down to do this, I will have the scenes already outlined out for me, and we can go and write scene by scene. So, um, oh, they want a camera pan of the room. I think that's a, that's a good idea. Camera pan of Jordan Con. Everyone say hi. Woo! You're all so enthusiastic.
enthusiastic. Yeah, they are so enthusiastic. They're like, he just asked us for money. Should we clap for that? Um, Yes. Yes, they're going to be wandering around taking money um, in the room. So there's your there's your camera pan. Let's do questions um, on the. Oh wait. There has been a request about stormlight spoilers. Stormlight spoilers. Oh, avoid stormlight spoilers. Okay, we will avoid stormlight spoilers unless you can circumlocute your question in a way that gives no spoilers, which is very hard to do. So be be careful. Um, we don't want to do spoilers, but um, hey, Jilly Bean saw a friend from high school. So anybody who has a question, feel free to ask us your question, and um, and we'll take them from the room or from online. Um, even the ones that you get from the room, though, repeat them. Yes, I will repeat them. I'm very practiced at doing that. <laughs> so no questions. You guys are all yes. Yeah, the wheel of time? You sure can. Okay. In one portion, you have Max digging out gold. Can you please explain to me by having that? Yes. Have you had any experience digging that in your collection? I may indeed have. Uh, so the question is, there's a scene in the wheel of time where Matt comes up with intricate backstories and roles and assigning people and sends them in. And the question is, if I, do I have experience as a game master? I do have quite a bit of experience as a game master. I um, don't do it as much anymore as I used to. Uh, I found that game mastering and writing novels share a lot in common. And if I spent all day writing, I was a pretty terrible GM because I'd already flexed all those muscles and I was exhausted. Um, and you know, now that I write full time, doing my work all day, and then going and doing more work at night was very hard for me. So I prefer to just be a player. All right, I'm going to take one here. Let's see. Um, what are Cultivation's feelings with regards to the Stormfather? Uh, Cultivation's feelings, that, I don't think that has spoilers. Uh, Cultivation is, um, um, I have to just decide how I can say things that are not um, uh, spoilers. Um, cultivation. Um, the Stormfather reminds her of certain things about someone else she knew. And she feels the same way about the Stormfather in some ways as this person that she knew. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. All right, any other questions in the room? I'll take another one. Okay, go ahead. Alcatraz 5. I am going to, uh, when am I going to write Alcatraz 5? Uh, I have a few things on my plate, but I do want to finish it. I have re-releases of the series coming out next year, probably. We sold the series to Tor. I bought it back from Scholastic. We are repackaging them with new covers, and we are hiring an illustrator to illustrate them, um, to have cool illustrations all through the book. It looks like we're going to do like 30 25 or 30 like ha little half pagers and things like that through the book. Um, we're doing a map. Isaac's um, commissioning a very nice map. Uh, and then we're going to re-release them. And so I will try to have book five come out when we have that going. All right. So, so there we go. Um, let's see. Are there cons or hiding in any of my books besides the Mistborn ones? Yes, there are. <laughs> Yes, there are. Um, when am I going to work on the next Mistborn book? Right now, I'm going to write Rhythmatist 2, followed by Stormlight 3. Um, and the uh, next uh, Mistborn book is going to come after that. Tor has asked that I write the next Stormlight book before I write the next Mistborn book, so I will be doing that. Um, I do have a chunk of the sequel written, but I had to put off writing it until later. Um, any hints on the thing hiding in the map of Roshar? On um, the map of Roshar, um, what hints can I give you? Um, it, the same thing is hiding in all of the maps of Roshar. The, all of them that we've done so far have the same thing. Um, you said you usually brainstorm an idea for about six months. How much of that story do you need to know before you start to write? For me, I need to. Um, it, at least have an ending in mind and 
and powerful points along the way that are going to make for great scenes. In fact, you'll see what I like to do later tonight as we work on this outline. Um, and then, then we'll get to, we'll, we'll, you'll, I'll, I'll talk more about it during that time. Will Hoyt ever have a book of his own? Yes, he will. He will have several. Um, is Harmony aware of events on Roshar? E yes, some of them. Will you tell us a little about the sword uh, from Warbreaker? Um, Nightblood is a weapon that I devised. Um, he is partially inspired by my love of uh, Michael Moorcock's writing. And he was built into the Cosmere um, using um, many of the foundational um, Cosmere magic system things that exist on multiple worlds. <laughs> yes. Follow okay. Do Nightblood and Ten Soon have the same voice? Yeah. Or like look at like yeah. I read them with the same voice. So you read Ten and Nightblood with the same voice. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes, they totally can. Right here. Uh, that was the time yes. Shadows for Silence, Cosmere Timeline, where does it fall in with the rest of the books? It is middle, um, middle Cosmere, a little bit on the late side, but not, um, I mean, it is, it is pre-Stormlight uh, uh, archive, so, yeah. Why were the blades, base form of shard blades chosen as blades, yeah, as, swords. as swords? It is because the um, shard blades were devised. Um, I can't, I'm not going to give, I can't spoil the second book, but the, 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 they were devised as imitations of the honor blades, which were created and given to the heralds. And so since the original pattern was the honor blades, they were built to feel like the honor blades. Um, all right, let's go back to our writing for a little bit. How are we doing um, on our, our, our charity drive? Are people uh, donating? Uh, yeah. Yes, you're going to get me money li uh, numbers later on. OK. So. Yes, just, have, just come in, have a seat. It's fine. We are revising a story. So did I meant this, uh, this, uh, so let's go to this paragraph so you guys can read that one. I turn off the small vacuum to capture enough to smoke. To, Okay, so did I mention a vacuum earlier? No, we cut the vacuum. Well, there's a problem. Um, yes, yeah, so we need to go in and add the vacuum back in. Um, so guys online, by the way, remember your questions and we'll ask them um, later. You can ask them later on if I didn't get to them this time. Um, blowtorch. All right. Let's see if we can we let's see if we can splice in the vacuum here. I do think we need the vacuum. Actually, you know, probably don't. We can probably use the ceiling fan, right? Maybe. Let's just make um, instead of it rattling loudly. Um, Let's see. See if I can get this right. What I want to do is I want to add on here that the bathroom fan, um, he, this rattling is something that he added onto it intentionally to make it loud to cover the fact that it's actually a very powerful vacuum that's going to pull the air and recycle it out and things like that. Do we like that? Do you like that idea? Yeah, let's go back here. What do you think? Uh, one question. So back to the bathroom, right? Yes. Would it be a ceiling fan? Would that be a good purpose? Or a vent fan? Yeah, would it be a good van? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, they are. 
there. We need something that will actually capture the smoke, but which won't capture the smoke without us as readers being able to first see it make its images and then get sucked up into something, right? So this is what we need. What, do, what, do you, what is your suggestion? Yeah. Uh-huh. OK, it causes a problem. OK. Yes, yes. This was originally Steampunk, but I think we dumped the Steampunk part originally as we wrote it, because it just turned into science fiction. Maybe we'll go back to Steampunk. And that's perfectly legit. Let's, um, let's keep it non-Steampunk for now. And then as we work on our outline, we can decide if we want to push it back Steampunk. And we also have to suspend the vacuum of a vial. A vial, yes. So OK, all right, we will do that. Um, uh, OK, uh, let's see. <laughs> who smoke in bathrooms? Consult with people who smoke in bathrooms. Anyone smoke in a bathroom? <laughs> on an, on that bathroom lavatory? Like, yeah, um, we don't, I don't ever need, to need that. I, I said it's autosave, so we're good. Yeah, it'll, it, oh, you want it, oh, you want it autosave for the people online to be able to grab the file. I get it. Right, OK, got it. Got it. We're good. Um, all right. Um, let's see. Yeah, you have a. Um, could you possibly include the vacuum somehow with the blowtorch and make that one piece of equipment that's meant specifically for this use? Oh, interesting. What do you guys think of that? Do we like that idea? Yeah? OK. The problem is we want to be too careful about front loading too much world building stuff. Um, to interrupt our, um, yeah. Um, but if we call it his hair torch, how's that? Do we like, is that his hair torch? But that's not going to let your human that's thing true. advance in the air and be visible. That's, that's what they yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, need, we really need that scene. We really need to be able to see it. Yeah. Yeah. We need, uh, we need it to be part of the dish, really, that there's like this dish that the smoke rises, and then there's something above it that's capturing it. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Um, I'm swinging in a small dish. Boy, can I explain this in a non-confusing way? Um, What's that? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, I suppose we could. Boy, this bee is bu is bugging me. Let's try this. He fixed his goggles. Foot, two feet. Which side of that to? Two feet above the dish.
So they hung about two feet above the dish. All right. You like blowtorch more than hair torch? Okay. The the burning dish is. I was just trying to imply it's a. Um, yeah, I think I don't think we needed this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm working on that. Don't worry. <laughs> what are they hanging from? Um, and folded. Hidden something in the wall. What do we call this? Compartment. Yeah. That's a good idea. I worry that we're already doing too much and adding another phrase that it's hidden as a light fixture. Um, yeah. So. Um, just let me finish this up, and then we'll worry about, yeah. Broken ceiling fan mast. All right. All right. All right. So... I think that I have it in a state where I want it now. I think this works better. Um, but what we've got is it's obvious now that this is something that he's done before, that he was prepared to do, that he's got this whole setup to do. Um, and so let's see. Um, <laughs> uh, what is Kelly doing with ceiling fans? I don't like this style. I'm sorry. We're, we, this, this storm light book's going to be real, real different from others. <laughs> all right, all right. Suggestions now. No, I think that we'll be fine. It's a, I think that it'll be implied when it pops out. We'll, we'll just do it later on, but it's a good suggestion. Any other things on this that people want to? Say, otherwise we will pop down here and um, he turned off the vacuum. Moving. Ooh, where's the V? Yeah. Removing a small vial with smoke swirling inside, right? I don't even think we need that line, honestly. He's captured the smoke. It's implied what he can do with it. Um, yeah, I like it better just not even saying that he can use it again. Um, so he pocketed this, cracking the door, but he left the powerful ceiling fan running. It wouldn't do for Lucy's patron to catch the scent of his own burning hair. And rubbed his hands as if having just washed them, falling to use of the facilities. Okay. I think that all works now. Um, 
And the room beyond was intentionally and distinctly individual to him. Mementos ornamented the walls. And how do we actually do this? We do, I think that um, this is better as something like this. You can do this with semicolons too. Um, Wow, that's a lot of things on his walls. We probably don't need many, all of these. What's that? No, these are all just foreshadowing of who he is. Um, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ditch the plate. Um, I think his first shears would come first. So cut one of those things and then set this one off as important. Um, I think that's the way we want to go with this. There were just too many things in that string. And we needed the cufflinks. Uh, we needed the small toy, small toy dragon because my uh, son insisted that we had put a dragon in the story. <laughs> so that has to, um, that has to remain. Um, and uh, the first shears are obviously important. So the other thing we could cut is this. But um, I, um, I like the idea that he's forgotten them because it's eaten his memories, what he's been doing. And that's a nice um, thing. Uh, I think this is implied. <coughs> but how about this? If we do this and So, you remember his trip to the mountains where he'd gotten the toy dragon? They had once been important to him, he assumed. He didn't know how his. Uh, let's see if we can combine this. All right. He didn't remember his trip to the mountains or, or where he'd gotten this toy dragon, though he assumed they had once been important to him. Yep. We're going to be doing an outline today. Yes, the, for those asking. Sorry. It's important to him. See, I'm not sure, like, a, as an aside, by the way, um, you, in the last, like, 10 years as, or more, I guess, as reality TV has gotten very, very popular, a bunch of people have tried to start up novelist reality TV shows. <laughs> you can read about them. Um, Writer Beware, which is a blog run by SIFWA, often does posts on them when people try to start them up because Rider Beware is kind of a watchdog group. And they're like, is this going to, you know, all the, they do a lot of very serious things, but sometimes there's somewhat more lighthearted, like, look, someone's starting another reality TV show. And they give the details. It's kind of a warning to those who may want to uh, participate in these things. And the question always comes up, reality TV show based around writers? Like, I know you're all sitting here watching me, um, but I'm like, this can't be that compelling, right? I mean, I'm removing a word. Here we go. Look how dramatic that was. I can imagine, like, you know, like on Survivor, they had the music. It's like, dum, 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 dum. Will he keep, <coughs> will he keep the possessive or not? You know. Um, uh, did they? OK, they did golf like Survivor. 
I don't know. I don't just writer. You know, it's so. What we do is so um, solitary, and I'm very used to talking about my process because I teach a lot, so I can feel some of the dead air and explain what I'm doing. But I think, like when you really got into something, like I couldn't do this for Stormlight. I couldn't sit there and explain what I'm doing. I would have to, because my attention would have to be so focused on the story um, that it would just be all of you st- sitting and staring, and be like, oh. What's he going to do next? He went up the steps. Ooh. <laughs> now you're going to stare some more. What's he going to do? Oh, he put his shoulder, his spear to his shoulder. No, no, he didn't. That got cut. Uh, yeah, anyway. Um, uh, so, and once been important to him. Um, I don't like the parallelism of he didn't know versus he didn't remember. Um, we're repeating too much of that, and I want to get rid of one of the two. And I like having rem- added this, he didn't remember, um, from the previous paragraph down here. I think it's a natural flow. So we might just do something like, um, yeah, maybe. Um, Puts this puts it a little more into viewpoint. Um, how did his conscience choose which memories? I did let you watch. That's true. I did let you watch me write the interlude for Words of Radiance, but there was a lot of dead time on there. Um, and the, the one I did on YouTube, if you want to watch me writing something, I wrote, um, a, uh, I wrote, which one did I write? Um, Risen. I wrote Risen um, on video. But then I posted a thing where I speed it up so you can watch it at like, you know, <laughs> quadruple speed, which is a little more dynamic. Um, okay. I think we might be able to cut all of this, honestly. It might be better just trimmed. That's kind of the rule of thumb. Can I cut it? I think I'm just going to cut that too. I think we're going to trim down to this. Um, memories he's stolen are ruined in place of those. Yeah, memories he's stolen, worm their way into it. As they had for. Uh, those were trips. So I don't need that one. And the names of friends. The names of friends, childhood. <sighs> okay, oh, they posted the link to it. That's good. Um, I'm Uh, we need a new word for experiences. I want to do childhood something. Childhood what? Uh, no, that doesn't fit the parallelism, unfortunately. Uh, memories are stolen. 
replace, what can it replace? Like the memories can't replace childhood pets. They can replace memories of childhood pets, but then we have to repeat memories. That's what we're. Dreams, traumas, memories, and ambitions. Dreams, traumas, ambitions. For names of friends, it has to fit the structure of what we're looking for here. What's that? Fantasies. Fantasies. Um, so what's that? Antics? I, antics? No. Recollections. Cherished experience and even plans you've been making. Okay, I think that's working now. In a sense, this room was more him than Lucius himself was. He'd worked here for two decades. The room remembered a person, a person. No longer was. All right, so next se section is done. I used your word, I did. Let's go back to, let's do a few more questions. Um, what else do you guys want to know from me? Um, we got, it's 940, we're one hour in. So, any other questions for me? Yeah? Uh, how much more do you want to write about Stephen Leeds? How much more do I want to write about Stephen Leeds from Legion? Um, I want to be, I want to write, uh, a decent amount more. I have finished Legion 2, which you may have noticed, um, which is called Legion Skin Deep. Um, uh, I had a really great name for a title, but I don't know if I can use it because Skin Deep is kind of a reference to beauty, right? But I thought, ooh, a, a great title would be Legion Lies of the Beholder. Uh, I like the pun on that. Um, but that's also beauty is on the eyes of the beholder, so I can't make them all puns off of beauty. Um, but I, the original concept with Legion was to do a short, um, a short that would, I imagined being a television show. That's how I imagined it. Um, and I wanted to do future episodes, so to speak. Um, I particularly love the episode format that they're doing for Sherlock in, on the BBC, if you guys have seen that, where your season is three hour and a half long mini movies, basically. Um, and I love that format for a television show. I wish we could get more television shows doing that. I would rather sink my teeth into an hour and a half long um, episode that has character real growth and development, progress, and the next one doesn't just re hit the reset button and say, another adventure. It is progressing the characters further. Um, I'd rather get three of those in a season than tw a 22 episode where of those episodes, 18 are just this, you know, yet another adventure with no progress. Um, and so, um, Anyway, that's, that's how I imagine that. Well, building off that, since you're, you're talking, you think it as a TV show. And when you first came out with Legion, there was talk that there, Hollywood was already interested. So yes. What, has we sold the rights, and then um, they let them lapse. So uh, they kept the rights for two years, and they let them lapse. So let's see. Um, is hemallergy still practiced during Harmony's reign? Yes. Um, Current status of the White Sand graphic novel. We have chosen a writer, and the writing is quite good. We are very pleased with it, the person who's adapting the story. We have not chosen an artist yet. We have had uh, several that have been sent to us um, that have, they're doing, each of them are doing an, um, a sort of uh, application with their art, and we are now choosing among them. So if there's, you know, we're looking for professional comic book and graphic novel illustrators. And so if there were, happened to be one of you out there who has done professional work in this field and has done, you know, I mean, you have to be able, willing to commit to doing a lot of work um, and you have to work with dynamite and things like this, then you're more than welcome to contact us. But I think we're close to picking somebody. Um, so question over here. When will second book of Legion be out on Audible? Uh, probably, I think November 1st is the scheduled release date. Um, and I think Audible, I, I can't promise this, but I think we're going to do the same thing we did with the first one, which is it'll be free on Audible. 
um, for like the first two months because they are short enough that charging a full credit for them is kind of, you know, it's like they're, they're one third of a book, right? But you can't really split a credit into one third credits. Um, and so if you do want to go buy Legion, uh, the Audible version is very nice. And I think they sell it for like five bucks or something. Don't use a credit. Just go spend five bucks on it. Um, and the second one, we did that one free for the first few months. And I think we may do the second one free for the first few months also. Are they planning to do that for Infinity Blade, like an Audible release? I don't think there are plans right now. But the fact that you're interested makes me think maybe we should ask if they're interested. All right, right here. And the theme of creating people in Emperor's Soul is that an example of my brainstorming process. It is actually drawing upon some of those same things. So I'd say that is a true analogy. Um, let's see. When will we see a Hoyd book? You will see a Hoyd book. Um, <laughs> you will not see a Hoyd book until I've finished the first five books of um, Stormlight and the next Mistborn trilogy at the earliest. <laughs> More likely it's after Stormlight is done. Um, so, um, from the moment you started World Builder Ashar, how long did it take before you could finally, because uh, it really resembled what we read at Way of Kings and Words of Radiance? Resembled? I would say about a year. Um, but I started world building it in 2001. What, if you read the version that I wrote in 2002, you would say, this feels like Roshar, but the Spren weren't in it yet. So, yeah. Are you going to see any chapters that are expressly Hoyt? He's becoming more and more important. You have seen two. <laughs> are you going to see more? Yes. Um, I would say that if you look at the structure of the first two Stormlight books, you will find several themes. And those themes are likely to be repeated in future books. And Hoy does like having the last word. Um, <laughs> so, so yes. Um, how are we on our donation drive? We are currently over 300. 300. At the moment, I'm using that number. OK, so we're at 300 bucks, um, which is nice. There are a lot fewer people on the chat room this time, so we appreciate okay. you guys who are donating. Uh, question over here. Is the original 16 card holders all know each other? Did the original 16 shard holders all know each other? Y yes, they at least, yes. I would say that they did. Um, all right. Pat Ross's theme question. Um, Pat Ross did an episode of Tabletop with Bill Wheaton. Would you be open to doing an episode of Tabletop? Yes, I would be. Uh, can you tell who killed Asmodian's story? Um, I just told this here, but I can tell it pretty quickly uh, for you guys. Um, I, I, I told it at JordanCon, but I haven't told it on, um, online as often. Um, it's really simple. When I walked in to get the notes from Harriet on the very first um, book that uh, when I was gonna, getting the notes before I started working, on the top there was a post-it note attached to a piece of paper which listed uh, a fan theory about who killed Asmodian and written in Robert Jordan's handwriting, which I've confirmed was his, was this is right. <laughs> and that's all we had um, was the fan theory and the post-it note. Um, and so we uh, decided to put uh, who killed Asmodian in the appendix of the book because um, we felt that I got it somewhat like an appendix, a post-it note um, after the fact. And so I wanted you to feel like I did. <laughs> uh, so, so yes. Um, I am going to quickly, look, look how dynamic this is, going to tweet again that I am here um, and see if anybody um, is going to. Oh, it was 11 minutes ago. He, Isaac already tweeted. Um, wow, OK, nice. It's like people have something better to do on a Friday night than come listen to me blab. Yeah. Uh, there was a point where Hoyd was lamenting about the uh, expectation of people the more talented you get. Was that the author citing to Hoyd there? Um, Hoyd uh, waxes poetic on the idea that, um, that the, the more people expect, the uh, more difficult it becomes for the artist. Um, this is more the critic um, in me having noticed that my own expectations for a piece play dramatically into how much I enjoy it. Some of my best experiences at the cinema have been films I had 
no, nothing, no idea what to expect. The Sixth Sense was like this for me. I had never heard of the film. Um, my friends dragged me to it. They said it's, I, it's a horror, and I'm like, I'm not sure if I want to watch a slasher pick, but I think it's going to be terrible, I just, whatever. And I watched it, and it was a great movie, and I came out of it saying, wow, I did not expect that. Um, and yet something like you know, The Dark Knight Returns, uh, which is a fantastic film, well done. Yet the second film was so good that I went into the third film, and it wasn't quite as good as the second film, and I came out and said, eh, where, you know, it's a great film, right? And yet my expectations, um, it's, it's unfair to the artist, but it is the way that it, I think a lot of us work, that our expectations do play a lot into how our experience is for the story. So that, would, that was that, a lot of the things when I, um, when I go into things like that, I'm not trying to let the author speak so much as I'm trying to say, what would somebody who analyzes art, like the critic in me analyzes art, what's an observation they would make? Hoyt is not me, and he does not voice necessarily my um, personal opinions, um, but he is, um, he, is, uh, he is an artist and a critic, and so he notices some of the things I notice. Jason, how you doing? You want to come say hi on camera? You're not on camera unless you come stand up by me, but yeah. 375. So 125 more, and Ben will come in and uh, draw something for you live on air. How about that? Ben McSweeney um, will come and draw something. And my screen just turned off. Oh, good. It came back. Um, all right, let's do one more um, online. Um, how do I feel about Robert Jordan's intense fascination with clothing in real time, especially when it came to the female characters and what they were wearing? Um, I think that it has lent a great depth to the Wheel of Time world, and a lot of people who are very into costuming love it. And so I'm glad that something Robert Jordan was fascinated in was able to make his stories better for his audience. Um, the clothing descriptions were not something that I latched onto as much. Um, I'm like, yeah, it's a dress. Um, so, um, but a great novel will have a lot of things for a lot of different people. Um, and I'm very impressed by what Robert Jordan was able to do. So once again, let's make a plea for you to donate money to world builders so that we can make Pat Rothfuss come and talk to you on camera. I'm sure he would enjoy doing that, um, but we want to, to be supporting him. We're going to bring Ben McSweeney, who did Shalon's sketchbook pages. Um, in the Stormlight Archive and Isaac Stewart in, uh, who did all the symbols and maps, and we're going to make them talk to you on air, answer questions, and draw something for you. They didn't, I didn't tell them that they have to do that. So you should all denote, uh, donate to make them do that, and we will let one random person who has donated, we will draw one of their names, because you're keeping track of these all, right? We cannot draw a random name of somebody who Oh, we can't, because we can't do raffles. That's right. That's right. What can we do? Do something for everybody. We will do a random drawing among all of you. We don't want to do raffles because raffles fall into gambling laws, and it's a very bad idea to fall astray of gambling laws. We have somebody who is, knows too much about the legal system on the board meeting. Hey, this is why we had, this is why starting Waygate was important. Having an attorney to say, that's a legal pitfall. Let's not do that. So we are going to draw randomly among the people in the room and on the chat. And we are going to give one of them the artwork that Ben draws. So if you will donate, if he doesn't come in here, nobody can win that. Uh, so we have to get to $500 so that he will come in and do that and do a sketch for you. Um, and then we will, um, we will give it to one of you somehow. They will find a way to create raffle. It's not a raffle. It's a, it's a free, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. We can't send it to you if you live in Rhode Island. Or, no, I'm joking. Um, um, so I'm playing with this rubber band. I was a paper boy for many years. It's very hard for you not pick, to pick up a rubber band and want to shoot it. Um, paper boys, we, we, you know, it's, it's our stock and trade. So you want me to shoot it at you? All right, there we go. That one didn't fly too well. All right. Um, let's finish another few paragraphs of this. Um, and then, guys who asked your questions online, um, I won't make you make, um, make them again. I will go ahead and scroll, uh, scroll up. 
Um, so what will the sketch be? Um, it will be um, whatever you guys telling me has to sketch. <laughs> All right? Um, so, um, yes. Well, within reason, he gets to choose. Um, we could make him illustrate our story. You could make him do a stormlight thing or something like that. Um, oh, there it is. We've even got paper. Look at this. Yes, I was a paper boy, Houdini man. What's that? You stole the paper from Looney Theories. Okay. His patron was a man in his mid-30s. Now, I'm going to go ahead and mention to you, by the way, that this whole revision thing, I'm scrolling to see how much more of this I have to do. There's a lot. This story's long. Holy cow. I, I had forgotten that I wrote this much story. Um, my goodness. What was I, how did I do all that? Um, okay. Um, because I do not like revision. If you, if you aren't aware, um, revision is my least favorite part. I always want to be writing new stuff. But I think it's very important to show people how I do this. Um, we may do a little bit more of this and then stop and then work on our outline. Um, so um, so let's, but let's do some more. Um, let's go ahead and use um, Lucius's name here. Patron was a man in his mid-30s with visible... We don't need that comma uh, with visible streaks of gray in his beard and hair. That hair was kept deter was determinedly disheveled, kept wild by intention. I like that phrase. Men and women sought holiness and individuality, and it was proper to display such with flair. That's a awkward. Sense. All right, we need a word there. And so displayed their what with flair? Yeah, maybe uniqueness. With flair, it is a bit obvious. Does anyone have a better word? Individuality is up here. I think these two words flipped actually might be better. Yeah, I like that. I like that better. All right. All right. We should be back. Okay. Sorry. So... There we are. Today's pa patron, Master Obulus, was a man in his mid-30s with little streaks. Um, ship captain, oh no. Uh, if you, you guys didn't watch the first one, there was a guy on the stream who yelled ship captain like every time he was allowed to post every two minutes he typed ship captain at an excellent exclamation point and posted it uh, so jason there was a question for you aren't, aren't you close to being published <laughs> mm. his book is very good mm -hmm. it does still need work it does still need work was determined the shovel. I'm worried about these. This sentence and this sentence are basically all saying the same thing. And I'm um, I'm repeating it too many times. So that hair was determinedly disheveled. Men and women sought holiness and uniqueness. So displayed the individuality with flair. Mm. 
Ich war ein Trinkzeichen für das Gewissen. Let's use the name of this race. What's the race again? Hi. To spell that. A -A -A That's what I get for letting people, men and women. <laughs> so, holiness and unique essence. Oh, if I have to give money. All right. What you can do is you can, um, guys, you can first determine randomly if it's online or here. And then we can, um, we can have everyone here write their name on a piece of paper and put it in. Or you can just you know, randomly determine something like that. Um, so. What's that? All right. I think we're going to, I'm going to scan through the story now for those who, and those who haven't read it can. We're going to stop with the revision. Um, and I'm just going to put, um, that in to, uh, to let me know that this is as far as we got in the, the, the yeah, don't laugh at me. I hate this part. Um, and let's see. Yeah, that's right. We should get Pat in here. Um, well, we have to have donations to get Pat. Hint, hint. I, have Iron Man. I, I love how they came up with these things that we need to call him your exclusiveness and all of those things. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I will give it to you in just a second. I'm giving a scan to refresh myself on it. Um, and that's what I'm doing right now. All right, so here's our story. We're going to try and we're going to work on the outline now for this, okay? So here's our story. This is a world or planet where there is a race of people whose memories um, are reflected in their hair. All right? Yes, I know. This is, um, this is what happens when you brainstorm a story online. It actually works when this, when this alien people who are humanoid um, there, so they look so far just like humans. Uh, for several weeks after, oh, hey, Ben. No, no. no. Uh, okay, okay. No, not Ben. You're not supposed to be here yet. Am I supposed to be here at all? Because I haven't heard a thing. Yeah, I know. You, we, we're, we're, we're not quite to $500 yet. Yeah, 411. 411. Mm. So, um, 
<laughs> uh, oh, that you're, by the way, I promise that you'll draw something for them. <laughs> it's to encourage donations for world builders. So. Mm. Um. Well, I already promised him what you drew. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Too bad. I've already promised them all of this stuff. Um, so. so, here's our summary of our story. We have a draw a stick. <laughs> I think he would love to draw um, a stick. How do, you, um, how do you donate? They are going to post the link uh, for you, how you donate. Um, and those in the room can donate in person. Um, so what, um, what, we, what we've got here is a story where that's what happens. And our main character is a locksmith. He is a holy barber. Um, because your memories reflect in your hair, when you get a haircut, your hair, therefore, has your memories attached to them, and they take them and burn them in a sacred ceremony. Um, our main character is a spy who steals, who cuts people's hair, burns it, learns their secrets, and then does things with them. So even though he's a holy man, he's, he's secretly a spy. Um, in the first scene, he has somebody who he's been cultivating for two years, hoping to get a glimpse of something in their memories. Um, where it is, and he finally gets it in our first scene, <coughs> his glimpses of a ponytail frozen in ice. A ponytail frozen in ice. And what he thinks to himself is that he's finally found it. Um, the, the, um, the hairs, the ones from before, the ones who remembered. Okay? So, this is our story. This is our opening to our story. Um, do we have... Uh, Waygate folks, um, do we have, um, I had a notes file along with this, didn't I? Is that open or is that just at the top? It's, part of that. it's, it's just the at the top, okay. You have the, the initial bottom. characters and stuff, and at the bottom you have some things. Okay, the bottom we've got, okay. So, um, so we need to uh, decide what this ponytail is that he has found, okay? Um, um, let's see, no, so the question is, the suggestions from last time, which we can totally throw out the window for the suggestions you have, which is, um, do we want, what does this ponytail have? Do we want to run with this idea that they ha have, that nobody has memories from the before time, or is the ponytail his own, and has memories he should not because they're erased. And if he gets the ponytail, he can restore his own memories. Or what is this ponytail that he just saw? The sacred ponytail that the minister saw. Throw me brainstorms. Tell me what you guys think this should be. Yeah, it can't be his own because that's a lost lover. Oh, lost. Okay. Lover. Or let's not put a slash. Or his lost father. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bad slash. <laughs> yeah, very bad slash. Uh, okay. All righty. Uh, moving right along. What's our suggestion over here? Founder of the faith. All right. Okay. What else do you guys suggest? Oh, <laughs> he doesn't know? I think we need to decide. Um, yeah, a lot of my writing has to do with past time no one remembers. I've done that too much. Um, they do have a good point. Um, right now, by the way, Lord Wahoo, we do have him as human. Um, we could make him not, but we do have him as, as kind of an expat or something like that. The ponytail is Hoyt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, ponytail of a Jesus figure. I kind of like that one. What do you guys want? Do you have any other suggestions? 
shall we vote on this? All right. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Clues to the next step. Okay, so what we're kind of what we're running into is we have two divisions. We're at 456. Uh, 456, almost up to Ben draws for us. Um, so, and by the way, people online, Ben is in costume. Um, so. Um, Um, so, we, we have two issues here. We have to decide what the ponytail contains, which is separate from why he wants it, right? And why they're worshiping it. We as writers need to know, oh, we had another donation in person. Yay! Um, thank you for your donation to World Builders. Someone will get a cow because of you. <laughs> Um, we're laughing at that, but it's, 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 it's actually very true. That's what we're doing here. So we have to, as writers, know why, what's in the ponytail. That does not have to be for the, for the readers yet. We also separately have to know what he's trying to do in getting this ponytail. Um, now, the big question I'm going to also ask, and we don't have to answer this question right now, but it's an answer we need to know. So I'm going to put right here um, the ponytail. All right, we need to, for me to write a story, I need to have a cool ending, right? For this cool ending to work, we need to, okay, we need to have um, the, we need to build a structure of a story. And so we need to start asking ourselves, what kind of story is this? Um, is this a character story, primarily? Is this a, um, a mystery story? Is this a setting story? We have seeds of all three right at the beginning, and any good story you know, is going to include all these. But what does is, what is our ending come down to? Um, let's start brainstorming this. What could be a cool twist for a story like this? What sort of ending are we going to start pushing toward? It's not the ponytail he thinks it is. The guy's a serial killer, and he's been married to people like the guy. OK, OK. It's. OK, that's kind of cool. I'm going to throw one out there. Um, just the, we're looking for cool twists. Um, I like the idea that it's not the ponytail. It's not human. It's an animal. I think people would be able to tell that. I don't know, man. Horsehair is kind of like This is a story where they worship hair. <laughs> they know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not the alien hair. It's human hair. OK. Okay, the twist could be it's human hair. Uh, Let me the actual tell the pony. <laughs> pony <laughs> tells his memory. He wants to make a wig out of it. Um, <coughs> let's see what people said online. Uh, the ponytail of the Jesus figure, only the hair actually proves he was a trickster or a con man who would destroy the religion. Ooh. Oh, that's a great idea. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, the ponytail was a ghost the entire time. Nice. Um, so what if? Um, so what if we we could, one way we could play this story is we could play it as he is. We see him trying to infiltrate, trying to steal, um, and we set him up in the first part as a sort of thief type character, um, a sneaky type character, and things like that. Um, and then at the end, he actually knows this. He knows the tale is a fake or that it would reveal and destroy the religion. And he has decided that instead, you know, we, we, we play it as he's, we think he's going to do something nefarious. And at the end, he does something not as nefarious. Um, you know, he, the, the ponytail is not what people think it is. And so he's stealing the ponytail so no one will accidentally burn it and re make the revelation. I don't know, something like that. Where you can pull a twist on his character. The ponytail is a false memory. The ponytail is a false memory. Yeah. How, what, how do you say? What do you mean by that? Well, 
Okay. 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 It could be. Uh, in, it could be. Okay. Okay. If, if you go with the, he's burning it so that no one else does storyline. Uh huh. That could lead really nicely into it's frozen in ice, the ice is gone or something, and it's kind of there as like a time capsule. That was okay. It could be a time capsule. Great. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, through a couple of very recent generic donations, we're now up to 801. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Somebody just donated a ton of money. Okay, I'm going to actually, we're going to come back to brainstorming on this. I want to let Ben take over for a minute because I've been going for almost two hours um, and I need a break. My brain is starting to get a bit fried. So, wow. Um, that's very awesome, whoever donated that. And we will come back to the brainstorming after we let Ben take um, a little while to answer your questions, and Isaac as well. We just promised them, promised them that Ben would draw and that you will also be willing to answer. So come on up, guys. So. So we're going to lift this thing up and put it someplace. Where are we going to put it that it can be seen? Camera full screen, I can. Camera full screen. I guess we'll put it back in that corner behind the door then. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll rearrange the camera. We'll let them rearrange. I put the, the, the thing right the there. Microphone there. Okay, I'm going to We have one this. microphone that you two will get to share. This one's that one. All right. I've got a voice that doesn't need a microphone. I right. you can't you yell out enough for the internet. You also watch oh, this well for then. questions. <laughs> Um, and things like that. And I'm going to let you guys take a half hour, okay? All right. So, so I'll be cheers. back in a half hour. Okay. I'm um, going actually, to what I could really use is a pencil. One chair for each of you. I'm Any kind of pencil will do. Um, I just want something that I can use for light work so that... Uh, Hmm? No, I need, a, I need something for sketching before I go in for, like, uh, for detail. That'll be fine. <laughs> All right. I'm on the TV. <laughs> I'm just going to take this chair and move it out of the way. <laughs> Not a problem. And you can stay seated and I'll stay standing. And I will move the camera yeah, out of it so you yeah. don't worry too much. You're going to move it down? You want to move it, if around. anything. Oh, around, yes. And then move it around. <laughs> Sorry for the motion sickness, online viewers. That'll work. Uh, just a general allomantic gunslinger. It, without the coat, it's less allomantic and more just gun. Can so. still hear you online? Can you hear me? Do I need a microphone? Okay. For online, yeah. So the thing is, I'm gonna slap that in my pocket. <laughs> All right, now you can hear me. And we've got questions. All right. Ah, there we go. Yes, Ink Thinker. Hi, guys. <laughs> Wayne doesn't carry guns, but Wayne doesn't dress this pretty either, so. <laughs> Nobody wears this much black. <laughs> All right. It's quiet, but we can hear you. Draw the stick. Really, we're going to start with the stick. <laughs> Draw a stick. Oh, the stick. The stick. The stick stick. Yeah, draw the stick. We'll put it on the <laughs> Probably not this one. So for something as simple as a stick, we don't really need to get into sketch land, but I think we could probably have a lot more fun than just a stick. However, for the audience,
The camera's right there. It is a stick. Yay! Yeah, why don't we move this? Let me move it that way just a bit. All right, and I can work from the side pretty well. There we go. All right. It is the stick. Should be in Shalon's hand. Well, now you want me to draw a hand, man. I mean, come on. I'm on break here. Oh. Uh. Everybody on the internet, look at my butt. said that I don't try. <laughs> no, no, it's right because, wait, no, safe hand, free hand, right hand, thumb on that side. I'm good. <laughs> All right, so are we just taking suggestions from the audience or are we drawing anything in particular or how are we working this, guys? We have a stick. If somebody wants to start bidding for things, man, I can draw just about anything you like, but I draw even better things when I get paid. <laughs> Open table, guys. What do you want? Keep it basic because we're working with markers here. <laughs> Suggestions? Something awesome. I need a little bit. Yeah. You want a sill? I think we can do a sill. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring in a little bit of pencil work because we can get that much more done. No, Isaac does cliff work. Office Depot dry erase markers. No, 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 no. This will not do. Uh, I need a, let me get a, no, I'm not. Let me get a, a Sharpie, a good Sharpie, a decent Sharpie, any kind of Sharpie. <laughs> this will do just fine. All right. No, as fun as this is, if we start getting into color, everybody will just sit here and stare at my fanny for the next half an hour while I work in color. And that's not... No, this is actually good because the thicker nib um, lets the line show better for the distance that we're back. If you've got a fatter one, I'll, I'll even try that. It's pretty good fine point. Isaac, do you happen to have a copy of the brands on Kaladin's head offhand? In just a minute. Oh, excuse me, don't let me interrupt your tweets. I know this is so fascinating to listen to. Does anybody have any questions while we're working? Because I am able to talk and draw at the same time. Deafening silence. I've been drawing all my life. Um, picked it up as a, as a small kid, was encouraged by my parents, thankfully. Um, and uh, I'm largely self-taught, yes. I, I've had some schooling, but for the most part, 
where I learned to draw was just practice and the school of hard knocks. The more you do it, the more you, the more you get good at it. Uh, you know, these days, not much. Um, once you start to get good at the basics, fundamentals of drawing, uh, when you work with anatomy and composition perspective, the entire point is to learn how to draw anything by just breaking it down to its simple forms and then building back up again. Um, I have difficulty working in color, so I prefer to work in black and white, and this makes much things easier for me. But um, that's just because most of my background has always been working in in black and white line art and illustrations for books and for games. Isaac, you're welcome to talk too. Isaac doesn't do talking. <laughs> I'm not very good at talking. I'm not very eloquent. You use the word like eloquent, man. <laughs> now you're just showing off. <laughs> Can they see you touch your nose? What else? Silphrenia with a little bit of added calum. This is actually really fast because I hardly ever draw sill. Um, one of the rules with the Stormlight Archives is that we don't put a lot of time into drawing characters, uh, mostly because we want the audience to feel like the vision that they hold in their mind of how a character appears um, is as valid as anyone else's. So the more we nail down character faces and specifics, the more we sort of take that away and, and force people to like roll into our line. And we don't want to do that. So for the most part, did we just lose some? For the most part, what we there we go. Uh, we we stick to um, more universal elements, creatures, uh, designs for weapons and armor, for the plants, uh, for the things that everyone sees within the world. And then further nailing it down, every illustration within the Stormlight Archives is a um, a representation of a real world document. So for us to put a picture of a character in the show in, in the show in the book, <laughs> I have hopes uh, in the book. <laughs> would require us, in fact, to, uh, to have an excuse for it. Why is this a picture of someone in, uh, in the book? So without a reasonable reason for having to do that, we, we just don't. Brandon. Well, it's a, it's a group thing, but Brandon always takes the lead. I mean, he's the, he's the boss. So. Dum, dum, dum. So Brandon often, for instance, in Words of Radiance, what happened was that I was given a draft of the story, an early draft, whoops. I was given an early draft of the book. Um, some of the things in the text are really like, I mean, Brandon might as well put a big sign on it going, I want you to draw this. He leaves me a certain amount of freedom to decide, but at the same time, when the story narrates Shallan diving underwater, to look at the Santhid, I, I kind of have to follow through on that. I can't just be all like, I don't want to draw a Santhid, that's hard. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're doing a Santhid this time. Um, it was the same thing with pattern. Pattern was super challenging to illustrate, but at the same time, it was very much a part of the story that she had put all this effort and this energy into capturing as best she could an image of this creature. I can't, like, I can't walk away from that no matter how difficult it is. And even though the final, I feel like, is only a poor representation of pattern, it's better than nothing and it's what she could do in those moments when she was trying to seal it down. Questions from the internet? All different. Is there a question about or a what? Yeah, okay, we can do a parshendia. Chasm fiend is a little involved. <laughs> Plus, you get a chasm fiend in the novel. It's on page 820 something. <laughs> so, the parshendi well, how do we feel about those roughs of the Parshendi ideas? I did just draw one of those. Oh, okay. They look great. They look great. So the nice thing about the Parshendi is that they are basically a humanoid in form. Let's grab the pencil again. Do a quick rough. I wish I had my iPad. I could pull that back, that drawing up. And this is a nice example of just a general process. It's, it's very difficult to draw like straightforward without doing any kind of rough you know, form, even if all you're doing is just a little bit of loose guidelines, all of this goes a great, a great way into um, 
into helping set what you're going to do when you actually start to put down the finish lines that everyone sees. And I think one of the things that often happens with folks who look at illustrations, uh, they don't realize that there's an underlying structure to the illustration that isn't necessarily evident looking at the surface. It's like thinking that a house is the paint on the walls. Uh, you don't realize that you know underneath the paint is the structure, it's the frame, it's the insulation, it's the wiring, all of those things. Without it, it all falls down. If you try to do a drawing without building that framework, without putting that underlying structure, it's going to fall down. And sometimes you'll see very, very good illustrators, guys who have been at this for a very long time, who can just whip out a drawing right on paper without doing any kind of guides. Nine times out of ten, it's because they're very good and they've been at it for a very long time. They're still building that structure, they just do it all inside their heads. It's not like they don't have it at all. I said, what, 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 what are you doing? I'm doing what the internet tells me to do. You feel better now? You can't ask the internet. Apparently I can't be armed and drawing at the same time. We're trying to see cut gems or uncut gems on their beards. I don't recall. I would have to have seen what's uncut because they're like raw gem hearts, right? In fact, no, I'm sure they're uncut. I'm sure it says it in the in the in the text. So even though nobody asked in particular for soldier form, war form, Parshendi. It's the most fun I have drawing. Because really, when you get down to a Parshendi who isn't, for instance, in war form, it's just a sort of very stocky looking human with dark black skin marbled in red. I hope somebody else is paying attention to what's going on the screen behind me because I'm not reading anything. This is still terrible because I'm all tired. Does it look like I crossed my eyes? Are you crossing your eyes? Simon says. <laughs> Simon says, cross your eyes. Right to third storm life book. Yeah. We'll just bust that right out. What do we need the boss for, right? <laughs> so that's actually an interesting point in that, you know, what Isaac and I do tends to be at the guidance of Brandon. And while we have, you know, creative input of our own, I don't ever want to emphasize that, like, we're doing this, you know, it's, it, it's all guided by Brandon. One of the things I think that's best about the work we do um, in the books, and I think one of the things that sets us apart from other illustrated novels of the same type, not that there are very many, is that um, we work closely with the author. We work hand in hand with Brandon. There isn't a drawing that goes into the book that hasn't been seen, approved, discussed, theorized. Uh, we go through drafts. We do a lot of back and forth before we go to that final illustration. And a lot of times with illustrations, you're simply going to the art director. The art director gives you the description. They may run it past the author, but we don't get that same personal back and forth that I think makes a huge difference in the work we do for the Stormlight Archives. So while what you get for Shalon's drawings is the best that I can do, it's good to know that what I'm doing is at Brandon's guidance and at his behest. And I'm not just like running off on a tangent going, I think it looks like this. I'm doing my best to see what Brandon thinks it looks like and establish that in visual illustration. And I think that's important. I think with a lot of uh, illustrated works, with cover paintings and with game illustrations, um, you're oftentimes getting what the artist is imagining, but you're not oftentimes getting that same, that same sense of input from the author himself. Can you guys see what I'm typing? Yeah. <laughs> What's he typing? Uh, oh, okay. Writing. He's telling him the story. Yeah, yeah. So he's typing. Oh my gosh!
These proportions are terrible. I'll also be one of the first people to admit that I am not always, you know, going to nail it on my first run. That one of the advantages to being, uh, to, to, to one of the, especially the advantages to working digitally, but also just an advantage to, oh, here we go. <laughs> so working in the process as we do. Man, I am going to break something. <coughs> the heck? I feel like a magic trick. Yeah, like I'm just pulling them out. Oh, I see. Okay, that's dangerous. All right. Awesome. How much longer before we actually knock something down? <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the things that's always, like I said, good to remember is that. What does he want to look up? Can you sneak a message into him from one of the glyphs? Isaac always gets given the difficult ones. <laughs> I mean, it's about the same. No worries. We're good. I'll hold on to it just in case. But Yes, sir. Terrible. Moving on. <laughs> Just a bit of a parshendi. Tensoon. How does Tensoon look any different from your average Kandra? The Kandra can look like whatever they want, and in their true form, mm, they're very artistically, in, in, you know, interpretive. Uh, I can draw you a Kandra in true form. It would be Tensoon if I say it is. <laughs> But there's not anything that really defines Tensoon visibly uh, uniquely the way, for instance, Vin is easily defined by her hair color and her stature. Uh, same with Kelsier, that he's much taller and broader, has the sandy hair and the hawked face. Um, a chondra is a blob. You want to see what a chondra looks like? It looks like a bleh. So in the, uh, the Mistborn Adventure game, we did a rough draft of a chondra in his real form, and it just basically looked like a big sack of poo. Soft surf poo. I had to work on the illustration to bring it up a little bit because it was hard to tell what I'd drawn. They can't make hair. You're right. So, what are we looking for? I'm just messing with this. Oh, uh, nice. <laughs> Isaac, you did the map of Roshar that was on the back of where. Oh, that's Isaac. <laughs> Isaac is typing back to Isaac. Isaac, I thought. <laughs> Ten soon, doggy. Oh, okay. If Isaac speaks, I have to relay. Isaac says, "Not a chance." <laughs> he has too much taste for that. So, wow. Okay. Uh, okay, I can do that. I can do. I can do Zeth. I can do Zeth and a Colossus. Well, this is going to take a second. <laughs> no, no. Because he's right in that Coloss is something that I have drawn a lot of Coloss. <laughs> Coloss are fun. They are uh, a challenge in that they you know, really want you to, to know your human anatomy because half the time they're peeled of their own skin. So I'm probably going to mess that up a bit. But let's see if I can...
<laughs> he's so popular. Yeah. Isaac just doesn't want to accept that he's the pretty one. Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. I mean, technically, I'm secretly a 17-year-old girl. But uh, if Brandon has flanderized me into like the story, if he's written me into that, he hasn't told me yet, and he's just waiting for me to figure it out. <laughs> I like how he talks about it like it's a secret. I do know Ken Jennings. Did you know him when you were in college? No. I'm not sure how to take that because you know I think it's got kind of a lot of bunk dunk uh, dunk, but it's because I keep eating uh, I keep eating food from the office. All righty. Switch to line. I am nearsighted. I uh, have been since I was very, very young. It's actually really, really bad, too. Uh, Wait, can the people in the audience see our work? Yes, they can. It's all natural, baby. I just don't put anything in it. <laughs> the trick, don't wash your hair more than a couple of times a week. <laughs> and I won the lottery on the hair brigade there. I can teach you how to say bridge four in a lefty. Whoa! <laughs> 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 I, hopefully, I still have a job after you telling you this. Okay? Proud, then. Yeah, you can take the mic, man. I don't need to have this thing on. Here you go. Let Isaac do the narrating. And then I can teach you how to write to four. <laughs> <laughs> All the way to four. Oh, there we go. Because I, you know, I can't draw a coloss like that. So, so where, where are we at on donations right now? Okay. It's like, hey, we met a, met a goal, and now it's like halftime show. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just wondering where we're at because, you know, I, we were talking about the karaoke, right? And I have, I have a, an 11 year old girl and a 13 year old boy, and it's like the only songs I know now are uh, Selena Gomez songs and Frozen songs. The thousand to bring back Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, if we make it to $1,000, Pat Rothfuss is going to come in and do a Q&A with us. <laughs> Does Pat know this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to be the one that has to break the news to him, and he'll yeah. be like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Bridge four and a lefty. Did Ben or Isaac design the glyphs in the Stormlight Archive? I did. 
I did. So uh, here's an interesting thing. The uh, no, I'm not going to tell you that. What? Um, <laughs> it, it might be. It's a, it, I think it'd be a spoiler for book three. So bridge four in Alethi. You guys ready? Vev Gesha. Vev Gesha. Vev is the is the number four. V E V Gesha is bridge. G E S H E H and the way that we say it. So when I when I design the glyphs, I I always make sure that I know how to say it in a lefty before I design the glyph. So is there a reason for that? There is a reason for that. Are you gonna tell us what that reason is? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, the, the glyph writing system is just a, you're supposed to be able to look at it and say, hey, that's, if, you know, that's, that means bridge. But it could be elongated, it could be changed, it could be, but the same shapes are in there and that means bridge. Or, or whatever else that, that is. Vev Gesha. No. I'm going to raffle the Japanese kanji thing there. Um, the glyphs don't really relate to pronunciation. Y you, you learn them by seeing the glyph and knowing what the word is for that. But the people, the people who create the glyphs have a different process than the ones who read them. Oh, it, it can be pretty challenging to draw the glyphs. Um, we usually go through several different iterations of, of different looks of things before, they, uh, before we come up with something that we like. And uh, then they want you to post these on DeviantArt later. Or on, on Waygate Foundation. Yeah. I've been like six months off that site. <laughs> I haven't updated in so long, and I feel so bad. <laughs> I think uh, for, for all those who follow me on DeviantArt, I'm sorry, I will post the material soon. He says, hey, I'm going to give it back to you. What, are you going to give it back to me? Uh, yeah, they're li I think people are like, hey, that's boring. How dare you? Isaac is one of the most fascinating people I know. <clears throat> so, uh, for those of you who happen to be following me on DA, okay. Uh, for those who follow me on DA, I feel very bad that I haven't posted anything except September. I've been <laughs> super busy. So I will be back. I am going to post. I haven't given up on DA. <laughs> I've just got crap to do. <laughs> I'm making cartoons. I'm making news. <laughs> <laughs> No, I haven't seen Squat. What's up? They asked if you were seeing it. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. Uh, there's my wife in the back there, so. Uh, I should start signing these at some point, huh? I think we've got a little bit of time. Where are we out of the money? Oh, we don't know. We don't know. Well, then obviously we need more. I keep drawing. Teach them to draw, uh, draw to four. Count to four. Oh, do you want? Oh, yeah. Here we go, man. We'll, we'll count to four. It's so easy. Um, I'll even sign it. Ooh. Do you want the mic while you're talking? Because one. Yeah. <laughs> Two. I'm, I'm teaching them how to count in Alethi. I hope. That's okay. <laughs> I also told them the Alethi word for bridge four. Okay. And I spoiled book three. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I, I want to hear what you said. I don't have to be sure yet. No. No, I, did, I didn't spoil book three. <laughs> so. You're fired. <laughs> so this is how you count to four. In, in, I, just in a lot of the different places in the world there. 
Sanchi ni. <laughs> Sanchi no. No, I, I have it written down somewhere. I do know that this is Vev. So and um. that that is the that's the X that you see at the top of uh, Bridge Four. <laughs> Uh, I met my wife in a, a coffee shop about 15 years ago. Well, I don't know, closer to 20 almost. <laughs> and uh, they asked, ah, smoke, it's on the thing. And uh, I don't know that there's anything special about how we met. It, uh, we, we met, we dated, we broke up. Yeah, well, we met, we dated, we broke up, we dated some more, we broke up again, we dated some more, we broke up again, then we moved in together. <laughs> so, True love. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, knock yourself out. Uh, Are we going to switch? We're gonna swear. Wait, we can do it. Would you? <laughs> so. Oh yeah. Uh, all right. We have so let's sign up there. Have a well, stick. I'll get that to you afterward. This is very nice. This is a, a terrible sulfrenia, but a pretty good Kaladin. Oh, no, I like it. Yeah, what do you what do you take the page? Uh, no, it's a uh, it's a terrible sill, but a pretty good Kaladin. So I think it's a very good sill. Okay. And a terrible Kaladin. Yeah. <laughs> Are we gonna draw for the sill right now, or where's the sill going? The where's the sill going? Okay. Not yet. Um, I want to double check my mind. Oh, okay. So let's bring two over. Zeth a Zeth a fighting a Koloss. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Very nice. I think one of the yeah anyway, one of the very first pieces of art of yours I saw was a Koloss, wasn't it? Uh, well, there was the Vin piece, There's and then the there was the early Koloss, Koloss pieces and the early Steel Inquisitors. Yeah. The Steel Inquisitor was one of the first images that I read about in the Mistborn novels that inspired me to create a little bit of fan art, which I then put on Brandon's site which then was seen by Brandon, and when he needed someone to help him with the pitch for Stormlight. Just on DeviantArt, wasn't it? Wasn't it? No, it was on Time Wasters, guys. Oh, Time Wasters. That's yeah, right, that's yeah, no, that's, that's how far back we're going. That's yeah. a long way to go. That wasn't my site, but yes, that was a site I frequented. Yeah. It was the only, pl it was the fan site. Yeah, so, it and was it's, like the 17th chart. Back it's back. worth noting, yeah, I got into this work through fan art. Uh, fan art used to be a dirty word, and it sure as heck isn't anymore. Yeah. Um, if you love something enough to work and, and put effort into creating something for it, at the very least, the other fans will appreciate it, and you never know where it can lead to. We're going to draw for the Coloss next. What are we going to do? Uh, I already drew that one. Brandon, why don't you pull? Eight of hearts. Eight of hearts. Yeah, next week. Woohoo! Okay. And the Parshendi and uh, Syl will go online to somebody. They want Seth. They said, don't give away all the cool ones. Oh, we lied. Who lied? What lied? Lied who? What? Uh-oh. <laughs> they lied to us. When do we lie? When do we lie? Oops. I've been accused. Tell them the next two are going to online. On the, yeah, there are two more going to online. So fear not. We still have. Look, color. <laughs> so are we going to draw for this one? Are we going to draw for the internet on this one? How does that work? I have everybody who's online to sign the card. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Nice. All and right. so you're keeping it honest. All right. All right. So we're going to draw for the Parshendi first? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Parshendi first? Yep. Well done. Have we gotten any more donations while I've been gone? We don't know. She's <laughs> calculating. Yeah, it's 801. Okay. Now it's the full deck. All right. Been, uh, demanding for uh, four of diamonds. Four of diamonds. Four of diamonds. I'm going to post it in the chat room. Okay. Let, let <laughs> fans tell them that I'm going to post it in the chat You just did post it in the chat room, and it's posting in the chat room, but the card was the four of diamonds. Yes, who is it? Is oh, it I don't know who won the. It's on the in the chat room. Uh, he may fly. No. He may fly? He may fly. 
is the winner. Sorry. Okay. Now we will do. Yes, you. Yes, you. All right. may fly. Congratulations. And Till. <laughs> what? Whoa, someone just like vomited all over the keyboard and called it a name. It has numbers mixed in there. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, so that's hey guys, four. Let's clap for these guys. Yay. And I'm going to take that microphone back from you. All right, boss, it's your game again. No, I had a great time. The show is yours. Yeah. Okay, Bye, guys. I've told them to contact you if they know who you have. Okay. We want to slip by this way so that yep. we don't. Where's my hat? <laughs> my hat over there? Oh, oh it's on. <coughs> Okay, so, yes, it's okay if you clap from home. <clears throat> um, oh, he's saying Isaac, someone's saying Isaac Wait, he or she. I don't know why they're saying wait, but they're saying wait. Oh, that was awesome. Why is Isaac Um So, I will give another promotion for the Waygate Foundation. <laughs> $200 more, and Pat Rothfuss comes in and is yours uh, for, a, <laughs> for a limited time. Pat Rothfuss is yours. Um, um, so let's go ahead and support Waygate. If you thought that was awesome that we had these guys drawing and doing art for you, please consider giving a donation. It is a charitable donation, which is tax deductible. Um, yes, they are nodding. It is now the uh, tax for IRS guidelines, tax deductible do charitable donation that you know will go to doing very good work. It is to get Pat to come in and uh, do s whatever hijinks he wants to do. Um, I am going to be yours either way for another half hour, um, and then we will, if we have hit the, the donation guide, we will get Pat and bring him in. Um, and if we are not, then uh, we will be sad and do something else. I don't know. We will all cry. We'll just be done. Um, so I'm going to go back to the story. So we're going to, you know, we only have a half hour left, and I do want to do another Q&A. Um, what I want to do first, though, is I want to talk about how this story is the shape of this story as I view it. I took that half hour, and I've been spending some time thinking about this story. And really what I want to ask you, um, oh, Pure Blood is here. Hi, Pure Blood. Um, what I want to ask you is, you know, what, reading the beginning of this story, those of you who have, what promises do you think that we are making to our readers? Myself reading it, the way we tar start with the tension and the way that we build to a reveal with someone trying to get the reveal says to me, one of the promises is that this story is going to follow the same format that the opening scene did. <laughs> What's that? Uh oh. What was it? Let's make sure we make lots of comments so that one disappears off the screen by the time Pat gets here. Uh, <laughs> um, so what I feel this story is promising is some sort of heist. Because in microcosm, our opening scene is a heist. We are stealing something. And so if I were reading this story, hi. Um, if I were reading this story, I would expect that I would get some sort of heist ending. Which then says to me, as a reader, I want the story to play out that way. 
Um, so I would write in here, um, we need a heist element. And so I would start identifying what are the, what are the parts of the heist? What, what things are going to work out? Well, this is kind of a spy sp story. Information is what drives the plot. Um, and so <laughs> oh man, I, I came in during the halftime show, Sparrow cosplay. Um, you're con confused because I took a break and for a half hour we had um, people doing, um, we had Isaac and, and Ben doing art. I'm back. We're working on a story. You can actually, they're going to post the link. You can go read the story that we have right now. And we're trying to figure out how we can um, burn, no, no, how we can build the story. No, this is the same story as last time. We want to eventually finish this story. So, w save file, I just did. Yep. Um, what other things do you guys think this story is promising? Where, where do you think it is? Where, where, what would sort of satisfy, what would ending would satisfy you in this story? The ponytail has to be involved. Okay, let's do that. The ponytail has to be involved. All right, what else? Okay, religion is, is important. That is a problem promise we're making. What's that? Okay, yeah, why was he defrocked? That is, that's a, a question that has to be answered by the story or we'll find it unsatisfying. I agree. Kind of a funny one, but what's the fallout from the hack job on the beard? Hack job on the beard. Fallout from beard hack job. Wow, that B, you guys are going to be able to see. Every time I type a B, an N, or a V, it's, it's screwing me up. And why? Um, so I'm going to put a question mark on this one because I don't know that we have to. It would be fun to tie that in, but it is not essential, for, I, I think, for most readers to having this be a satisfying story. Um, is ponytail one word? Uh, sure, maybe. Um, the main character redeeming himself and being led back to the church or leading it. I would say, um, Tierf Tierflin, you are correct that this is part of the religion is important thing. It does not mean he has to uh, come back to the church. This, it has to be important. This story could go, he comes back to the church, or, or it could be he left the church for good reasons. Those are both legitimate paths to take this. Um, but the religion does have to play into it from what we've written before. Um, okay. It needs some hair-raising twists. Thank you, Fantrocity. Okay, yeah. It does need some twists. Yes? It certainly could. Um, I don't think it's essential to the high story, but it cer certainly is a part of it. Right, right. We have to decide the whole memories thing. Um, right, and uh, his memories. And I'm asking, putting a question mark on that because whether he get the story doesn't have to, he doesn't have to get them back. In fact, him getting them back could be the point of the story, but it could also be this is the price he's paid for something even more important to him, and then get him getting them back undermines that. Yeah. Okay. Either as a piece of the puzzle to get him further or something similar, something that he's forgotten to suddenly be vital. Okay, let me do an online ones for just a second. Um, I want to know about the technology of the world, finding peace with his life decisions. I think Aden, um, Aden Dari is correct. Aden Dari is correct. Um, he, we do have to have um, him finding peace. 
or destruction? It can go either way, but yes. Um, oh, hi, pure blood. Good to see you. Um, okay. Okay, so these are some of the. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we do need to decide. So I'm gonna, I'm, I want to list all of these things. Like, so these are promises that we're making, right? Um, we're going to go back up here to um, answers we need to decide. Need, need to decide. I can type good, yes. Um, so we need, to, we need to decide. Thank you for underlining that Microsoft Word. OK, so. Um, so I, what are the big questions we need to answer before we can start writing? What is um, the ponytail? You guys exclaimed over there. Was there something awesome? Oh. Yes, yes. That's cool. Um, oh, I get it. I get it. Um, all right. So, what is the ponytail? This needs um, to be addressed. This is, we need to decide this before we can write our story. Um, we need to decide. Um, what other, what, let's ask, let me ask you guys, what other things do we need to decide before we can write this story? Yes, I agree with you. His motivation is vital to us writing this story. Um, if we don't know, because this is, he's losing his life for this. Yes. Who is he? Um, what is his stake? Um, is the ponytail his? I'm getting better at this keyboard. Uh, if he escapes or get caught, yes, we do need to decide. Um, All right. Um, we need to decide what is his goal. Is it steal, replace, burn, what? The ponytail. Uh, we need an antagonist or a villain. Um, I would say that we need, we need a conflict beyond the heist. Right? I think you're right. Now, it could be a villain. It could be someone he's getting bad at, back at. It could be, you know, it, man versus man is very common, but there needs to be a conflict beyond the heist. The why of the heist is very important. There has to be a conflict um, dealing with that. Um, um, what happens to the story once you get finished? It will be sold online for a couple bucks with the money going to charity. Yes. Um, Okay, so any other questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the religion? Okay, so we've got to decide. Um, these are pretty vital things, right? I'm going to move all of these up, all of this stuff, up here to previous brainstorm sessions. And we may use that still. Um, these are all good ideas. But I'm trying to narrow down and say, what do we, you know, what do we have to answer? What are our goals to answer here? Um, now, I, having all of these will help me, would help me as a writer start to look at this and say, okay, I want to shape the story. Um, we, um, it, pure blood, it's man versus ship captain. Um, 
we, got it, we have to shape this story. Now, I would also then, when I'm building this, what I usually do is um, I will go plot, setting, character. And I will start brainstorming under these things the things that I need. Now, this is going to be uh, my plot. I'm going to write under here, heist. I'm going to use that framework um, where, and I'm going to say, um, one of our main plots is information. So what we need to decide is the information that is going to be revealed and how we can dole it out. What I'm trying to do here is when I'm building a story, one of the things I'm doing by instinct is this idea of what's going to progress us through the story. And I feel that what's going to progress us through the story is number one, building the heist, laying down the pieces of it, and number two, getting pieces of information piece by piece by piece until we put it together at the end. Uh, for me to build the story, I need to start asking these things. So the heist. What is our heist? He's gonna, is he going to steal the ponytail? Is he going to replace the ponytail? Let's start brainstorming. You tell me what is his goal. What does he want to do at the end? Um, yes, Sparrow Cosplay. It only remembers from the time, at least we have it right now, that that hair was growing. It isn't everything. Um, so. So it only has about one month's worth of memory. So something in that ponytail is important. So let's start brainstorming. Let's decide on something. OK, steal and replace. Um, what, but what, what why is what I want to ask. We have to know the why. We have to know what his, like, why would he do that? What's going on here? I think with the opening scene, the way that it is, being him burning the hair and getting the memories, that has to also be the ultimate goal. OK. He needs to burn the hair and get the memories. I, I would agree with you. He needs to, someone needs to burn the hair and get the memories. Um, let's see. How do I? and get the memories. I agree. Do more intelligent people in this world have no hair, more hair? I would say no. Um, I would say that, um, that your hair just records it re regardless. Um, let's see, what did Himfly say? Change the memories in the ponytail somehow? I would like that. Um, I like also the concept that he could be the bad guy. We we're telling the story from a sympathetic bad guy's viewpoint. Um, can you burn a few strands and get the same effect? I think that you can burn a few strands and get the same effect. Um, so what happens with this hair that is, in the, that is being stored? Do they ever unthaw it, use a few of the hairs, and then um, freeze it again? Or has it, it ever been used? I don't know. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. Yeah, maybe? Yeah. Freezing it lengthens that kind of thing. So that's why it's both. So we need a, we need a time bomb on this. I'm gonna say that the time is approaching. I'm just making this de declaration myself. Okay. Um, time is approaching. That the memories will be lost. Okay. Meaning you can only keep them for so long. It's been frozen. It is something important. And the time has soon passed. If these hairs aren't burned within the next short period of time, the memories will be degraded beyond the point that anyone can use them. OK? How does our character know that if he's only seeing the ponytail through the ponytail? Right. He is searching for this ponytail. He knows this person's going to see it. So he has an awareness of it. Go ahead, Isaac. OK, OK, that's a, that's a good suggestion. Um, there is also a good one online here. Um, I like Fantrocity. He says he's taken so many other memories, he doesn't know why he's doing this. I think that's a cool plot. But what I think we need to do is we need to say, our guy knows that his memories degrade. So he has frozen locks of his own hair when he remembered why he was doing this. And he will periodically get one out, burn his hair, remember. And that will tell him the next step that he needs to take. So he has left 
a uh, we don't want to go too memento on us with this. <laughs> Let's stay, but but we are dealing with memory and memory loss. So he has left memories for himself of what he needs to do. Um, and so we're gonna have we're gonna have he has left memories. I really like that idea, uh, Fantrosity. I, I think you're right. Let me read some more of these things. Um, I like the more the hair, the clearer the memories are. That's a, that's a good world building element. Let's put that un under setting. Magic hair subsection is. Okay, more you burn, the clearer the memories are. Um, yeah, the length of the hair is how long of a uh, memory you're getting. Yeah. What's that? What do people with no hair do? I, I, no, I, I, they still have their memories. You still have your memories. His memories are only gone because he's replacing them. The memories don't go out of you into the hair. They, it just imprints your memories. Yes, the with the the beer, uh, packet shaved in effigy, um, <laughs> at the beginning of the story. Uh, what's that? I don't know that he knows this. So guys, <laughs> donate. Have we got any more donations? We're at eight eleven right now. Eight eleven. So we need another hundred and ninety dollars to get Pat in here to force him to have to deal with this story that we shave him in effigy. So <laughs> let's put out another call for those who have come a little bit later. Um, think about donating a few bucks to World Builders. I would say, yeah, that's a good, good thing. Um, I would say that smoke degrades much faster and can't be frozen. Let it go. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, so freezing the hair, how long will it last if you freeze it? Yeah, so if it's frozen, how long does it last? Well, we've made the time bomb that the time is running out. They have vacuum technology. They have refrigerators. <laughs> OK, it could be. Um, one year, two years, three years, good suggestions. Yeah, my, my issue is I think that we, I, we may not be able to do the freezing thing as a time bomb looking at it because this is a science fiction story. And if we're going to say this degrades, it's got to degrade the way things degrade naturally, which means that it's slowly going to degrade over time. You're going to lose some of the memories each year. Um, and so we, we, if we do this, we have to make the urgency. These memories are going to be gone. Um, Eventually, but we can't put a strict time bomb on it. Yeah. I was thinking that instead of the memories themselves degrading, it may be a question of the hair being moved beyond his reach, maybe going off planet. Yeah. Or yeah. using it for something, maybe they're going to burn it and find out what's going on. Right, right. We need <laughs> so what let's decide what it is. Let's let's just go ahead and decide this point, then I'll get to everyone else. What is going to happen? What is our time bomb? Give me a few suggestions. 
Okay, there's not very much left of the original ponytail. Okay? The hair's about to be reused and used in a religious ceremony. Those are very the similar ones. I like those. Anything else? And memories have a half life. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what Steve said. I'm going to go with that one. I think this one works. So, a ceremony. Basically, a religious uh, time capsule. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like this. So, this is what we're going to do, guys. In this religion, when somebody dies, they cut off their hair and bury the corpse or whatever without the hair. They save the hair for a hundred years. And then they burn the hair and like the descendants or the important people can then experience what their forefather um, or foremother did a hundred years ago. And this is the important person in their religion. And the hundred year point is coming where that person's descendants get to burn the hair. And that, that's great. And that was your suggestion mixed with this one. So I'm going to write this out, okay, so we don't forget it. So give me just a second here. Eight forty one. All right. Okay. Right, right, right. So there's a good question online that I want to um, ask about you guys about. Um, th this question is really great. So the people, when they burn, uh, do they know they're going to overwrite their own memories? Or are they unaware of the side effect? I think they have to be aware of the side effect, right? This is a culture. So do we want to divide the keeping the memories for yourself to be something that you don't have to do? I kind of like it being a cool side effect. Or are they just willing to do this? What were you going to say? Oh, no. So what do you guys think? Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. But he's forgotten how to turn it off. Okay. Okay. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah. You could experience memories without the pain. You could uh, experience it, you know, all of you go to the ceremony and don't remember this at all. Okay. So what we could go this route right here. We could say, what do you guys think of an a non a person not of this race, not used to it, it starts getting in their head and replacing their memories. But if you're from the race, then you just experience it once. It's part of their racial identity, and then it's gone, and you forget it. And this was part of what makes him an effective spy, is that it replaces his own memories, and it's much more vibrant and powerful for him, but it ruins his brain as he does it. Do we like this? Anyone? So let's, let's make this part of the, part of the magic. Um,
Yeah? I think we're going with him, human, and them, aliens. That's true. We couldn't do that. Yeah, he has to be one of them. So that's a great point. Um, so I guess we do the ceremony thing that was mentioned online. I like that idea. You don't, you, he just doesn't know? Is it too momentous to have him? Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, I like that making the religion play into it. Um, let's see. Are, they, is this, are you just laughing at the puns? Yes, the puns. All right. Um, so let's go, by the way, we're going to keep going for a few minutes, but I'm going to put up some money to get Pat on this. But I want you guys to match it. Where are we? We're at 851. 851. All right. 871. All right. My money is upstairs, but I am going to put up half of what's remaining. All right. What's that? So what's that, what's half of what's remaining? I'm an English major. Tell me math numbers. $75. 75 bucks? No, because we're at 871. So it's 130 divided by 2, so that's 65. So I'm putting up 65 bucks. I want you guys to match it. If you if we don't get 65 bucks, I don't put mine up. All right, there's 20 of it. We need $45 um, um, Pure Blood, yes, I will eventually outline the story. Okay. And there we go. I'm going to put this in there. He knows that, the, that something terrible B will happen with the ponytail. But we don't know what that is yet. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to say we're running out of time. I don't want to get Pat in here too late. So go ahead and send send for Pat. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call. Um, yes, Pure Blood. I will do it live. This is the starting the um, outlining process right now. You can see how I've divided things up into plot and setting and character. Um, we will do a lot more of this next time. Uh, and so I'm going to call it here. We will do this again. Um, I like the, that something terrible will happen. I want to do a Q&A. Are there a few more questions for me while we're bringing Rothfuss in? Oh. Oh, good. Great. We have, we have, we have surpassed our goal. Yay, we're past our goal. Someone fetch Mr. Rothfuss. And does anyone have a question for me while we're doing this? Yes. Which character did I relate with the most? I have been asked this a bunch in the Wheel of Time. Um, and um, I related most with Perrin by far. Uh, Perrin was my man. Um, and I, I really enjoyed reading about him. And so being able to do some of the stuff I did uh, with Perrin was very fulfilling. I would say that the forging of the hammer scene is like something I was, um, I was very eager to be able to do something like that and was happy, though sad that Robert Jordan didn't get to do it, that when I came to it, there was a lot of stuff I could do with Perrin. Uh, Perrin was one of the least outlined, in fact, I would say the least outlined main character in Robert Jordan's notes. Um, we had very little about what to do with Perrin, and I was able to then say, good, this is a character I'm very comfortable with, and I know what I can do with Perrin. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so without mm -hmm. your, match, your donation, uh, we are currently at 1062. 
1062 without my donation. So with mine, we're over 1100. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, let me do these guys, uh, these stories. Uh, Pure Blood Ship Captain. Um, the ship captain was mentioned as an, a trinket on his wall. We will see if we can work any other ship captains in just for you. Um, let's see. Uh, Lyft stands outside Credit Shaw. Her goal is to eat the Lord Lu Ruler's lunch. Can she get away with it? I think she totally can. <laughs> She's Lyft. She'll just get him when he's sleeping. Um, <laughs> vacuum fan, the blowtorch. Um, which book am I most proud of writing? I would say that A Memory of Light is the book I'm most proud of. Um, Hoyd mentions that no story is, um, is new is repeated. This feels like Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time overarching philosophy in a connection. Certainly, though it's more a storyteller's connection, uh, storytellers know that the same stories are told over and over, and we've just learned to interpret them differently for our different lives. Uh, will you get more with Lyft? You will get a lot more with Lyft. She was written into the outline from the beginning as one of the people who gets a, a, a book of her own. So, uh, yes, yeah, Stone. Uh, Lyft, part of the inspiration um, was, um, boy, what is the inspiration for Lyft? When I was building the Stormlight Archive, I said, I want the um, Knights Radiant to run the gamut of different character styles, ages, and, um, and types of story. I, and when, I, when you say knight, when I say knight to you, you imagine one thing. What you don't imagine is a 13-year-old Hispanic girl, right? Um, and I said, I want to have the, um, the people that are in the Knights Radiant to not be the standard what you think of. They're, they're the entire world's different cultures having different people. Um, and so I said, well, what is somebody who does not fit that mold? That you would not say, this is a knight. Um, and Lyft was part of, partially developed out of me wanting to build a character who was awesome, but who was so different from what everyone would think of. Because, you know, you say knight, they think of white dude in armor. Um, and I wanted something very different from that. And that's where she came from. Uh, it also came partially from my, um, from my wife, um, reading a lot of fantasy and complaining that um, she's like, you know, the Asians show up in fantasy a lot. Asian culture inspires a lot. Um, European course, culture, of course, does. Uh, you see a lot of these different things. But where are the Hispanics? <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, there's, there's one. Yeah. And so um, she actually challenged me to put a Hispanic culture in my books uh, because I had never done it before. Um, and so Lyft is an outgrow of that. So, is the Her so are the Herodazians. Um, uh, they, are, they are meant to be um, it's sort of in the same way that the, um, the Alethi are inspired by, uh, by Korean culture, um, mash, mashed up with the sort of I c classic concept of med medieval knights. And the same way that um, sh you know, Shalon is based a little bit off of, um, off of Western American culture, or Western Europe culture, um, the Herodazians are launching off of some of the original Hispanic concepts. Um, <laughs> so, and the thing is, like, it, you want every culture to be new and original, but you are working from somewhere. And the, the problem is we've all worked from the same sort of stories for so long that it's part of why fantasy started to feel so stale. So, anyway, so that's where Lyft came from. Uh, yes, over here. Is there a possibility of finding out what happened? Uh, oh, another book. Is there another book? Um, we are not going to do any more Wheel of Time books. Um, Robert Jordan was very uncomfortable with the idea of people writing in his world. Um, he was even uncomfortable with someone finishing the story. And so I feel that it is, would be inappropriate to continue on, even though he was planning to do so. Um, so I have to leave those to your imagination. I think out of respect for his wishes, it is the right thing to do is to not do anymore. Um, it's not my choice. I can only say that with confidence because I spoke to Harriet, and this is her feeling as well. And so I can kind of, but you know, during one of our very early meetings, she came to me and said, what do you think of these? Um, and I said, I don't think they should be done. She said, that's exactly what I think. I think we should present a unified front on this. Um, I appreciate that that's what you feel because that's what I want, and so let's, Let's go that way. Um, it, it was totally her decision, but yeah. Um, 
Let me do a few more here. Um, if you're on the show, do you have a preferred game that you'd like to play? Basically, do you have a favorite tabletop game? Does uh, Magic the Gathering count? Um, <laughs> because it is on the top of a table. Um, if not Magic, uh, what is my favorite tabletop game? Uh, I played the Pratchett board game recently, and that was fun. I don't know if you've got played the Pratchett one. I don't know if I have a favorite other than, other than Magic, but yeah. Full screen camera, I will. Camera full screen. Hey, now you can actually see me. Um, uh, have you decided the POV people for the back five of Stormlight Archive? Yes, I did. When I created the original 10 book outline, I did uh, decide everybody who was going to have a book. Concerning everything going on, Rashar, is it safe to say Stormlight Archive will become the backbone series for the greater story of the Cosmere? The, there are three backbone series. Backbone series. Dragonsteel. Mistborn and the Stormlight Archive. Um, and Mistborn is past, present, future. Stormlight Archive is the center. Um, and um, uh, Dragonsteel is the, the beginning. So it really goes Dragonsteel, Mistborn, Stormlight, Mistborn, Stormlight, Mistborn. Um, is, is basically how, this, uh, how the backbone sequence goes. All right, yes. Oh yeah, the, the, the drawing glyphs um, is based on Korean and Chinese writing systems. Um, I, I'm, I'm Mormon, I served a mission in Korea for two years, loved the writing system and the language, and um, it was part of what inspired me to do that. There's this really cool thing um, where in Korea they use Chinese characters to write for a long time, and they're very difficult to learn because you just have to memorize them. Um, and there was a great king called Sejong, um, who said, my people are, based, are mostly illiterate because this is so hard. If we don't even speak Chinese. We're not Chinese. We use their characters. Can we develop a language, a writing system, that allow us to do this? And his scholars got together and devised Korean, which is a way to phonetically write Chinese characters, kind of. It's their own thing, but you write them in little groups to make little Chinese characters. It's the coolest thing ever. Um, but you can write any Kore most Korean things, not everything, but most you can write as a Chinese character or as a phonetic Korean construction of three letters that create that Chinese character sound. Um, and I liked that idea, and it spun me into the idea of the aeons and the aeonic language and things like that. Yes? What does Gliss look like? Um, Raffo? <laughs> Looks like a big Raffo. <laughs> Yes, I, I do have a raffle card. Do you want it? Yes. All right. You already owe me one for Philadelphia. I do? Yes. All right. You, you, get, you, get, you get one. Sorry, I'll take one. But I'll give you a sticker as, um, instead of the other. Do you want a <laughs> Sill sticker or, or a Human the Koloss sticker? Uh, human. Human. Do I have? I have Human, yeah. <laughs> Here is his Human the Koloss sticker. <laughs> We, we designed these for, uh, for, for kids who come to my signings and who are like forced to stay in line with their parents forever. Um, and so I'm like, you had to wait for three hours. At least I can do is give you a sticker. Yeah. The what's it looking like for the book series for the Rhythmatist? I'm writing the second one right now. It's my current project. It's going to be a trilogy. Um, and um, yeah. Um, I'm working on the second one should be out next summer, um, and uh, it's they're going to go to South America, so it's going to be fun. Let me do a few up here. Um, uh, could, you, could you repeat the Raffo question? The Raffo question was, um, can, how, what does Gliss look like? Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, Fantrocity, um, uh, <laughs> um, I don't think that works. <laughs> uh, Hoyt can grow, regrow his head if it's cut off. Lord really could too. What happens if you cut them both off and switch them? Um, that's really weird. Um, <laughs> have I read the original six Dune books? And yes, what I think of them, I think they're fantastic. But the later ones were so dense, it was a lot. They were a lot harder for me to parse. But I thought they were brilliant anyway. Um, will we get a book about the stick? No, you will not get a book about the <laughs> stick. Um, and I'm going to stop here and say, Pat, come on up. <laughs>
Oh, man. Sir, you are looking good. Thank you. Mm. Have you been working your magic in here? I, I kind of have been working my magic <laughs> such that it is. I'm going to give you this. Okay. I speak loud anyway, but I'm going to sit next to you. Um, is the camera full screen? It, it is. It is full screen. Um, so, um, how familiar are you with this project of mine? <laughs> I, I, I was following it off and on, but mostly I kind of had to stop because it filled me with such shame. Because <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something that I'd love to be able to do, mm -hmm. but uh, I, don't, I don't think I have the wherewithal. <laughs> no, this, it's, it's very hard, um, and it's not something I could do for one of my books. And it is something that works well with my style because of the way I teach. When I teach my class, I talk a lot about things like this. And so I'm just basically running through something as I teach it. But yes, we have been doing this thing. Um, now, I do want to warn you, this was not my fault. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, I didn't come up with this. Um, as we were working, we brainstormed the story on air, right? OK. And the story that came out is actually pretty cool. It's about a race of people who, whose hair records their memories and experiences as they are living them. And then when the hair is cut off, you can burn it. And someone who inhales the, the scent gets those memories. Yep. Um, and so we've come up with all of this. And so we were going we were gonna to actually shave somebody. And um, I, I said, so what do they look like? And they described you. <laughs> um, so you got, um, you got, they shaved you an effigy um, and then burned your hair to get your memories. Um, but it is not really you. That's uh, that's <coughs> kind of very. It's it's actually a very civilized version of uh, like eating a piece of my liver. Yes, yes, you exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and that's about as far as we've gotten on our story. We're going to keep writing it and things like that. You are not doing that. You are just doing a Q and A. Okay. You are just uh, me and you chatting and the internet watching. <laughs> um, <laughs> and things like that. I promised them they actually donated $1,100 to get awesome. you uh, in here to answer some questions for them. Um, and so I'm going to let them um, ask you guys, ask Pat questions. Um, uh, you can read them yourself, or okay. I can pick ones and let you answer them and address the crowd and things like that. Or do you, uh, get to ask questions? you do get to ask questions. Uh, how reliable is Coat as a narrator? That's a good question. <laughs> Will you repeat the question so, oh. that, um, so that people online get it through the microphone? The question was, uh, how, how reliable is Quoth as a narrator? Um, and it is. It's a good question. Um, let's see. Um, everyone's making jokes about burning your beard. Um, anyone else have questions? Will Brandon and Pat ever do a collaborative novel? <laughs> you know, I, I will admit that, like, if, if it would work, we would have, like, a huge superpower team up. Yeah. You yeah. know? <laughs> but it would be, I, I, I can't help but feel that it would be extreme double or nothing sport, uh, <laughs> where it would be a house on fire or a house on fire. Did I, I told you my idea. You appear to have forgotten it. I told you once. It, refresh me, because somebody so, brought this to my attention. Someone brought your attention. I told you once at dinner, I didn't say we should do this. I said, I have this dream. Okay. My dream is that um, together, myself and another author, and I've always thought of it being you, but it doesn't have, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot too much, <laughs> but brainstorm a story together, a world and um, something like this, and then we each pick some characters who are cross-purposes for this goal, and then we will write a chapter, send it to the other person. They will write a chapter with their characters trying to screw up what they're doing. Like, you know, they'll be like, uh, or whatnot, like it's cross purposes. And it's a novel that we write together where it's not Brandon Sanderson and Pat Rothman. It's Brandon Sanderson versus Pat Rothman. <laughs> right. Oh, and man. Only one group can succeed. The other, like, dies in a horrible way or something like this. Or, you know, and then at the end, we don't actually get to write the ending. We have to give it to George Martin. Oh. <laughs> and we oh. have George read it, and then he tells us how we have to write our ending. We don't make George write the ending, but we. And then so at the bottom, it's it's like Pat Rothfuss versus Brandon Sanderson with guest judge. <laughs> <laughs> George R. Mark. I do remember this now. It was like I had the, I'd repressed that memory. 
But and it is because as you were mentioning, I'm like, yeah, but we need some manner of mediation. Oh, yeah. right. And uh, we right. do not have to do this thing. But the reason I thought of it is because you see all these books of like, and this person, and this person, <laughs> you know, this, you know, I'm like, well. Who writes the versus novel? Versus. You know, your characters are seducing each other's characters. <laughs> and your characters are trying to assassinate each other's characters and things like that. I so that's what people talk about um, when they say... I am. I. I. It's am like an evil version of Sorcery in Sicilia. You ever, you know that story? No, I don't. Sorcery in Sicilia um, is this awesome story that was written epistolarily between two writers who each wrote as their characters, writing letters to one another and they actually wrote it that way they'd write a letter send it to the other person they would read it and say well this is what's happening in my life and the things that you just saw affected me in this way and wrote it back and stuff like that wow um, it, it was kind of yeah cool book. i think we we, we got to someday do we this. will okay good we want we, someday, i want to we, we definitely want to do this yeah i want to have a question for you how many more princess books are there uh <laughs> I, I would like to do at least one more princess book um, where the parents come home. Uh, we gotta have that. Uh, but I, I, and if I had it, I could like write the script uh -huh. and like turn it over to Nate because he's the one that has to do all the heavy lifting. But I don't know, I, I haven't really had the idea for what that one would really be about. It's, it's very interesting, the second one. Like the first one, after reading it, I'm like, I'm kind of scared to read this to my children, right? <laughs> Which is a good thing. Yep. The second one I read, and I said, this is perfect for my six-year-old. And I read it to him, and he loved it. Um, and, but it still was horrifying. It was just horrifying in a very different way. Um, and um, I was so nervous reading that book. <laughs> like, yeah, this is a lesson for you guys as, as aspiring writers. <coughs> read the first book. And then the things that happen in the first book, by page two, you are so stressed out <laughs> in the second book that the first book acts as this perfect sort of, it's the, it's the idea that you, know, you don't have to actually do something horrible. The threat of something horrible can be so stressful and tense um, that, it, that it works really well. I, I'm so pleased mm -hmm. that it gave you an ulcer yeah. because <laughs> I, when, I, when we had the rough sketches, I would take it to people and I'd, you know, because my, my circle of friends has read the princess book, and I would go through it, like, on the computer, I'd yeah. click through, and I'd read the pages, and I'd watch, and they would, like, and, like, with the first princess book, they'd laugh or right. whatever, and in the second one, I was getting, like, pointedly muted affect, uh -huh. where I'm like, but, like, because the illustrations were great, and her expressions were great. Her expression during the near end, where I'm not giving spoilers, is so fantastic. <laughs> and... Uh. And like, there's some funny bits in the early part of the book, but I wasn't getting any laughs. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, I've blown it. I, I, I've lost the magic of this story. But what it really was is that they were so anxious about what was going to happen that, yep. that they weren't, uh, they yeah, weren't. What is it, page yeah. two? And she has a baby brother. And you're like, whoa, no, <laughs> no, no babies in these stories. <laughs> All right, we should let other people ask questions who are not me. Um, let's see. Anyone else have questions in here? Um, <laughs> um, Pat, when's the last time you When's the last time I shaved? Uh, to the skin, it was last Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, in, it was around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, no, it was... Uh, it was back in 2002 um, where I was dressing up in drag for a parade float. Yeah, that's, that's the reason I can remember. Uh, yeah, you asked, I tell. Yeah, I think you would be better in drag not having shaved. I mean... I do not make a pretty woman. <laughs> like, no matter how bearded or not bearded, it's just, I don't got that. Uh, it was a Studio 54 float for this parade that we we participate in every year and so actually i made a really good they, they you guys know about studio 54 some yeah. of you yeah. yeah and uh so they found all these photo references of the regulars who went to studio 54 and one of them was this like guy in drag not really trying to convince you he was a woman just dude liked to wear sparkly dresses and actually i was a pretty good dead ringer for him you know uh <laughs> Not a pretty woman, but appropriate for that particular float. <laughs> oh, um, 
Yeah, no, that, that's that's yeah. actually a, 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 a an interesting one. Are the ADEM an yeah. offshoot mm -hmm. of the? How's that pronounced? Amir. God, is it really pronounced Amir? I have no idea. Um, uh, <laughs> now, when you say when this person says, "Oh, th that's talking about in my book." Yeah. What are the? What's? <laughs> yeah, that's your book. It's. It's spelled wrong. Uh, it's somebody that listened to the audiobook. Now, what's what are the uh, the wheel of time with the heron mark swords? Uh, oh, the, are you talking about the Aiel? There we go. Yeah, the Aiel. Um, uh, I had. <laughs> That's okay. You're okay. Don't have a heart attack. Don't have a heart attack. Did I just screw something up? Yeah, yeah, you did. That's okay. Don't have a heart attack. <laughs> You're only a Jordan con. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Clue me in as to what I did uh, here. The Aiel won't carry swords because they've sworn off of them. They have spears. So, yeah. Okay. It's I... kind of like you said, what are the names of those Jews who love pork? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, not Jews? <laughs> my, my editor? <laughs> in all fairness, I read the first two books in 94, so it's been 20 years. That's, I, I did an okay job there, given my, the state of my memory. Uh, but people have asked before when I was creating the, uh, um, the ADEM, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, is this influenced by the warrior culture yeah. and whatever? And I'm like, it's hard for me to say because I read those 10 years ago. Can anyone call me on uh, if, I, if I rip that off, the, the ADEM versus? Yeah, you'll, I do not notice. I only notice the similar roots of warrior cultures. I mean, he was relying a lot upon the Cherokee okay. um, and some of these uh, Native American warrior cultures, which seem to have some similarities for what you're drawing on, but I would call similar influences personally. And I, all I remember about that is that it was cool. Like, that's, that's the extent of what I remember about that culture. I read it, and I dug it, and I am glad to know that I did not accidentally steal that in a terrible way. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Uh, who's your favorite fire Firefly character? That's a hard one. <laughs> what are you, how about you? Wash. Really? Oh yeah, easy wash. You you, you jump you could jump right to that. Yeah. I, I had to think about it because people ask me, uh, and I realized that in the, st the stories I was loving, without the levity that Wash added, um, the stories would have been too dark for me. Absolutely. Um, and his character, as a contrast to the rest of the characters, made a lot of those stories spin for me. Of course, Mal is the heart. You know, I mean. It's the, st it's the story of what if there was no Luke Skywalker, it's only Han Solo, right? <laughs> so you can't have Firefly without Mal, but I don't think I would have enjoyed Firefly nearly as much without Wash. You're right. He was. I, I, I say Wash. Yeah, he's an absolutely essential leavening element. Um, I probably would put, pick Mal, uh, if I feel like a bit of a cop-out saying that, but, uh, and, and I will actually qualify that to say slightly later Mal, because mm -hmm. early Mal, was, was Joss Whedon's original concept, where it's like, right. he was playing him as, this man is used up and done, and he's just done. And you know, as, while I, I trust the Whedon in all things, I know that the studio pushed them to make funny Mal. And when Mal started to occasionally be a little bit funny, that's where the character, it turned a little bit and it just crystallized. Where he was still used up, and he was tired, and he's, and he's broken, but like having his little bit of, of humor in there, where, and, and I remember when I started to love Mal, he was sitting on, in, in the deck, it's after Shindig, and Anara comes and sits down next to him and says, so how you doing? And he's like, he's like, I got stabbed, like right here, and he starts to show her, and he's just like, I know, I know. And, and she's like, does it hurt? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> it hurts a lot. And I'm like, oh. Oh, suddenly he wasn't taking himself quite so seriously. And it was in that exact moment that I started to love Mal, whereas before he was just cool. And like at that point, he had his hand around my heart. And in all the episodes afterwards, I had this empathy for him that I did not have before. It's when he made me laugh that he started to break my heart, uh, and and he never stopped. He never stopped. We don't want to go take too much of your time. We'll oh no, it's, I'm, I'm, it is, uh, is that Mary? Uh, hey Mary. Hey Mary. Uh, <laughs> Mary. Um, <laughs> George, Mary was the uh, guest of honor. Um, <laughs> Jordan, 
was it she guessed the wrong? No, not no. She was four. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, okay. What's your question? Where's your question? Oh, present. What's your favorite deleted scene? Uh, not counting course friends. Like six chapter. Um, it and out of books, out of our own books. I think she just says favorite deleted scene, so it can be anything. Anything. Yeah. I'm a little partial to the first chapter that I cut out of Name of the Wind. Mm. You cut out? The one we haven't seen. You haven't seen it. <laughs> so, <laughs> when are you going to put that up for charity or something like that? Actually, I will admit I've had a fantasy for years now of going to my fellow fantasy authors and saying, so you guys cut chapters out of your books too, right? And I already have. I've mm. talked to a lot of people and we all cut these things. We, uh, yeah. We write them for good reasons, and then we cut them for equally good reasons. And I would like to, to do that. I think I would call it, uh, it'd be like the deleted scenes version of all these yeah. epic fantasy novels. I know uh, Neil Gaiman cut 50,000 words out of American Gods, and wow. Robin Hobb you know, cut a big chunk out of one of her books, and I know. I threw away the first entire book of Way of Kings. <laughs> <laughs> it can't go in your anthology. I was going to yeah. s- But I, I wrote it in 2002, and it was wrong. And it was one of those things that is a, you don't know why it's wrong. The book is just completely wow. wrong. Um, and um, I sat on it for years. And then I, it clicked in my head what I'd done wrong. Um, and this is a, a s- slight spoiler, but there's a character who makes, a, who in the, the book that got published, um, he is offered a shard blade and he turns it down. Well, that was the prologue of the first original where he took it and the story was about a, um, a man becoming a shard bearer and it was boring. <laughs> it was the same story you've read a ton of times. The peasant gets this, you know, becomes a nobleman and it was dreadful. Um, and the rest of the whole book worked, but that character didn't and that was like the main character. Um, and I didn't figure that out until 2008, 2009. And so I had to trash the whole book and start wow. over. Um, so yeah, I have, I have, but I also have done that for a most books. Deleted I've, I've book. Deleted book. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a deleted scene. Deleted it is book. A deleted book. It's, wow. I had to, yeah, throw the whole thing away. And yeah. And, you know, and actually, what I'll do to mention something that mm-hmm. is accessible to people in some way, uh, as opposed to this mythical lost first chapter, um, I will mention the lost unicorn which was the original draft that Peter S. Beagle wrote of The Last Unicorn, because he was trying to write it, and he was like, dude was like 20 years old. Who's read The Last Unicorn? It's an amazing book. It's like a pearl. It's, it's, it's my absolute favorite book, and I read it once every year, and it is always better than I remember. And he wrote it when he was 20, you know? And, but what happened is he, he took a run at it, and he's like, this isn't working, and he's like, 19 years old and it's 64 he's like I'm gonna go on walkabout so he like spends six months wandering America comes home and in that original version the unicorn leaves the forest and meets a demon that has stolen fire from hell okay and and so and they kind of go and they do some things and it just it didn't work and he came back and he's like well this has to be about either the demon or the unicorn and so he ripped the demon out, and that became the last unicorn. Uh, but reading that, you know, that lost unicorn book that Subterranean, uh, Subterranean Press put out was like a real education in how somebody can, like, who writes yeah. this beautiful book, it can go wrong right out of the gate. Do you remember when we were both on a panel with him? Where, yeah. which, which con was that uh, at? It was a world con or something. It was you, me, and Peter Beagle. I do remember and that. we both sat there and didn't say a word. I do remember and that, yeah. <laughs> they would ask questions, and we would both turn and say, uh, Sir, Mr. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> it's the time where you, you would have seen Brandon and Pat be the quietest ever, because they're not quiet guys. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, let's do one more question um, from the internet, and one more question from the group, and then okay. um, let you go. So, I think you need to do Barbara's question. I think you got it. What's, where is it? Yeah, right there. Barbara, right there. Barbug, um, would Hoyt and Quoth have a musical battle? Who would win? Um, I'm going to say Quoth would win, personally, because Hoyt is, um, music 
is a hobby for, for Hoyt, but his true, it, um, the thing he is doing, it is a side note to what he's really up to. His soul is not music. His soul is this story with the Cosmere, the thing he's trying to achieve, which I haven't revealed yet, so I'm not going to give it to you. Um, and music is part of his training and who he is, but he is more a liar and a storyteller than a musician, and music is a means to achieve what he wants. And my read on Quoth is a true magician. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, same thing. Uh, but uh, no, I, I think I, I might have to, I, I think you need to hit, hit the nail on the head there where even though Quoth, you know, as a, as a musician, he's, he's a hell of a con man, you yes. know? Mm. But, uh, but he is, he's a musician first and foremost. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, but again, it depends on what the rules of engagement yes. are, really, for that yes. contest. People always ask these things, like, who would win? And I'm like, yeah, rules and engagement. They try to fit my characters against each other. I'm like, well, one stabs people in their sleep, and one is an honorable knight who will challenge you to a duel. Who wins? Well, are they in a duel, or is one of them able to find the other one asleep? Um, you know, Dalinar and Kelsier. Kelsier's going to find him when he's, you know, he's in the john, and he's going to slit his throat from behind. Um, Dalinar wins in a sword fight <laughs> if they both have swords and are on the field of battle. So, <coughs> Okay, let's do one, <coughs> excuse me, from out here. Bueller. Really? Bueller. Uh, are we going to finish the entire trilogy? Or this has been asked many times. Are we going to finish the entire trilogy, or is this a media goal or just the end? Or is that for me? Yeah. That's also a good I question. Know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I I do not reveal what I is. Ask the best questions. You you ask good questions that are really, but they're like, what happens next? And I don't answer yeah, what good. happens next. I'm I'm sorry. It's not, it's not that I hate you. <laughs> No, no, it's it's that I love you, and I don't want to, I don't want to spoil your experience of the story as a pure thing. Yeah. Um, who, uh, if, if you were to have your book translated into sign language, who would have a better book? <laughs> <laughs> sign language. That's the question. <laughs> that's question. Brandon would. I can I, I can actually say that what? for a fact. Why? Because the, their arms would fall off from. Well, no, your books are longer. Well, we're 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 neck and neck. I think I think the second way of kings trounced me. Uh, uh, the question was, if both of our books were translated into sign language, who would be the better book? And I do think it's yours because I think you, you've got such strong plot, mm -hmm. and I am not strong plot. You are music of language. And so that would be a translation issue into, oh, but plot could, would, could come across. You would need to have, your, you are going to rely on your translator in any language more than I am. And yeah. uh, like interpretive dance, I might be able to take him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there might be a little more room for flair, but like standard American sign, yeah, yeah I think you're going you're gonna to win that one. All right, let's give Pat a round of applause. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go crash, guys. I got in today at 7 a.m. Oh. Fle flew overnight, so it's not. A, I'm not gonna pull a long night tonight. <laughs> I am gonna go to bed. I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, thank you online, everyone. Thank you for those who donated. Um, and if you won one of our pictures, we will send it to you. And there we are. And, uh,